Te vi, sentí que eras para mí. Te quiero descubrir y yo no quiero compartir. Tus ojos brillan fuera de tu control. Cuando yo te vi, sentí que eras para mí hoy. Ay, 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 te voy a enseñar, te voy a silenciar. Así. Quédate un rato. 
always play jungle. I am top. I am mid lane. I play bot, AD carry. I am support. No matter your position, stay true to your lane and join Kia at the League of Legends EMEA Championship. Kia, movement that inspires. And gentlemen, and welcome to Samsung Galaxy Ultra Liga Season 10. It is playoffs, baby, and it's time to have the best of five series. It is time to have a good old row at each other. We already witnessed one match, and it's time to witness the second. My name is Dr. Brum, and I'm joined here by Solari. And let's get ready for Alien Back Team versus Iron Wolves. Kind of. So I think we really need to get ready. I think we really need to get ready for this one because yesterday there were good news and bad news. The bad news for me was that there were there was no five game series. The good news is that at least we didn't start with a three zero because we all remember last splits playoffs when we only had one three one series. Everything else was three zero, and we're a little bit scared that you know what's gonna happen in this playoffs. But no, yesterday was a banger day. So today I'm expecting no less. In fact. We talked about it in the pre-show, Brilman, and we only expect two scenarios today, basically. One scenario is that it's going to be a 3-0 for Ali Bang team. The other scenario is that there is going to be 3-2 for Iron Wolves. And I, th I really think there is no in-between for that. I genuinely don't think there is as well, because if you just look on paper how things are looking, it's, uh, it's a tough situation to assume. Let's actually take a look at the predictions and see if the rest of the casters are uh, feeling about this the very same way or if they do not which is a very good question. why are you moving around stop moving around take a look at the predictions don't move <laughs> and uh, actually look at that some people do consider that this might be a uh 3-1 angle they're wrong i really think they're wrong. Eh. Like, look at that mcguire trying to feel the rich we have kaspersky is Porter, Twitter, you all are wrong. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I I can see where they're coming from, but does it look a little bit suspicious to me? I guess it does, yeah. Uh -huh. If you take a look at the graphic as well, not the graphic, but the brackets uh, as well, then you can pretty much see that, yes, as you mentioned yesterday, it was pretty much a hard fight between uh, uh, Madralni Forsaken and Illumina, uh, Illumina Gaming. Now, the winner of today's match is going to go towards the next round two and the next uh, uh, best of fives, which is going to be played against Matrani Forsaken. And I feel like if Wolves are going to advance today, then we're definitely getting a five game series um, uh, versus Matrani Forsaken. If Alio Bang team advance, then I uh, refuse to elaborate. <laughs> 
I think it's also going to be a, a five game series if they advance further. Whoever is going to go there with Motorani for a second, because yesterday Motorani for a second showed a lot of resilience against Illumina Gaming after Illumina took the first game. And Motorani for a second were like, hey, stop. This is the moment where we actually need to start taking this seriously. We need to rethink our draft. We need to take away the possibility for Illumina to play the game. Um, comfortably, and then Motorani for a second very, very stomped them, and that was a good damn series. And I really can't wait to see what Motorani for a second will prepare next week because whoever wins today and is going to go against them is definitely going to give them a good battle. But let's not get ahead of us because we need to talk about today's series. And today's series brings a lot of questions. We've mentioned it already, and let's try to get a little bit deeper into it. I think I've even uh, talked a bit on uh, talked about it on Twitter a little bit today, because I genuinely think that if Alio Bang team is facing one opponent, then Wolves are facing two today on the field, or on the Rift if you so prefer. Not only they're fighting against Alio Bang team, but they're also fighting against themselves in a certain manner. Because, <laughs> I mean, that yeah. is true. Whether you yeah. like it, whether you hate it, but it seems to be the ongoing trend right now with the team because they arrived uh, back in season seven. Mm -hmm. Let me count. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, <laughs> seven. <laughs> We're good. Uh, in in season seven, made a huge impression out of themselves. Went all the way to the playoffs and believe they have scored themselves in the third place, if I recall correctly making it a huge blast of things. Problem is, even then already, we saw a little bit of, I don't want to say it's not even inconsistencies as we speak about, for example, Alia Bank team and stuff like that. It's uncertainty coming from that team. Maybe one day we're going to be destroying the entire Rift. Maybe one day we are going to be doing something greater. Now, we've seen that part of them develop of Wolf's battling against them, their own selves and their, you know, their worst impulses. I really do think that with Yoshiro coming back to the squad and the overall way how they are trying to rebuild themselves up right now, that is one of the most important matches for them to try to go against the Bank team, really. I'm going to be... I, I'm going to steal the joke from production, okay, that they just threw at us. There are two wolves inside Iron Wolves. One of them is going to, you know, battle through the enemies, is going to crash, is going to be the alpha predator on the summon street. And the other one is, you know, this, this video is the little dogs chasing their own tails and being like super tiny and super cute, but extremely harmless. Yeah, that is pretty much Iron Bulls. Inside I them, there are two bulls, and you never know which one is going to be up today. I think we need to redo the joke a little bit, and I know this is... Go on. I mean, so, let me just say it before I say anything. I mean it with zero offense. But there's two wolves battling inside of them, Challenger Division and Iron Division. Da -dum yeah, it's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sorry. But, I mean, frankly, it really looks like that with the wolves right now. Well, for Aliobank team, actually, if you think about it, how happy they are right now. They completed Ultraliga, they have battled in EPL, they have pretty much had, had their own fun. Now they can only concentrate on best of five series. And, you know, you don't have to play in two splits at the same time anymore. So you don't have to pretty much exhaust yourself with lack of time anymore. And you can just fully prepare for one best of series that is in front of you. And then if you're going to have more than, you know, one after another, basically. Uh, however, can we talk about how important this series is for Iron Wolves? Because previous season they really wanted to get into the playoffs but they couldn't and who was it who stopped them it was alia bank team because both were fighting for the last spot in the extra game that was out of fast because it was a tiebreaker between the two and alia bank got the victory in the end and animals did not pro go into the playoffs so we didn't see them playing in there right now they are in the playoffs both of them and this time it's them fighting each other again but in a slightly different scenario and i'm happy for that because first of all it's good for the plot and second of all i can't wait to see these two fighting in a best of five and there is police running around and honestly yeah because this is going to be a fiery banger so we need to pay some extra attention to it everybody needs to be super careful the summoner's rift is gonna be on the fire today mm. whoop whoop it's a shout out yeah. to police. Anyway, um, that is absolutely that is definitely true. And the other thing is that actually ca ca catches my eye over here is 
the amounts of things that both of these teams can pull off. And I think one of the greatest representations of that is the champion pool of both of these of both of these teams and players in them. Because I mean, yes, the statistics are statistics. Can I just bring your attention to your notes real quick? Please. You know what I'm scared? Do the math and take a look how many no. champions Jonatas has played mm -hmm. in that season. I'm no, going to make I, it a I, tiny I bit extra fast for you. 16 champions. 16 unique champions have been played by Jonatas in this season. That is insane. We only had like 18 games in the regular season. So apart from two games, every single game he was bringing out a new champion. That is absolutely insane. And even though there is a very broad jungle pool that is common between the junglers, so Adi has been playing quite a lot of those champions too, you can see that Yonatis is just way ahead of Adi. The playstyle is a little bit different. For Yonatis, there is no specific playstyle. He can play whatever the team wants from him. Adi is a different story. Adi wants to be the carry for the team. Adi wants to take a champion with a lot of their own tools and that can become the main character in the story. And I wonder if he's going to be given many of those because <laughs> the battle for jungle champions is going to be rather interesting today. Definitely. And another thing that actually catches my eye is the fact how uh, both of these teams have really different playstyles. Again, if you just look at the um, jungle champion pool, so you can see already, Yonit is likes to be the carry he likes to bring some big guns to the similar rift and try to add a little bit of craziness to it with carthus fiddlesticks mm -hmm. uh rumble kain there's a lot of these champions that can just pretty much change the entire play style of the team while mm -hmm. Addy is the champion to try to, or, or rather is the player to try to facilitate his team right to try to make sure that everybody feels as stable as they can possibly feel on the rift so that's one thing that i'm actually very excited to take a look at and the other one is who is going to be carries for their teams because with the new addition of yashiro we have seen him either to be not shining whatsoever or taking the pentacle for himself <laughs> in yeah. like how many games he already played like in in I, I I'm very bad at counting today, but like four games, I think something like that, which is uh -huh. not exactly a lot. And already in these four yeah. games, he catches a, he catches a pentacle for himself, five. and then Zty five games, thank you, and then Zty, who has shown incredible level of playstyle and incredible level of being able to sort of manage that pressure of i might be the carry of the team and i need to step up to be that carry for the team i can't stop looking at the 80 carries man yesterday we also had the champion pools for both illumina gaming and motorani forsaken and the situation was completely the opposite 80 carries had so many 80 carries in common a very big pool and we talked with mcguire about why and what's happening in there and we said that the meta really favors very specific ad carry champions and that's why we see the majority of them being split between the two ad carries here it's a completely different story of course you have to remember yes that he sure is uh freshly reunited with the league and with the team but there's only two champions in that common pool and that's interesting because in in the current meta it is really hard to find unique champions for the ad carry role yet somehow both of them manage to we all have to see how are they going to approach it because if you look at it there's a few more champions that you can actually consider to be somewhat you know somewhat common for both of them as we have seen for example mm -hmm. you should play a lot of Jin. i'm i'm not exactly expecting to see Jin on the seminars rift especially not in this game or rather in this series but I mean, you never know, really. Let's take a yeah. look at the bands, because uh, there's a lot of respect bands actually coming to uh, both of the teams. Yeah, you don't really see, you know, the usual bands coming in. Like, you know, if the enemy is on the blue side, you need to ban out Maokai, Kai'Sa, Rail, stuff like that. No, those bands are really directed against people. Manny's Ani taken away by Wolves. Yashiro speak! The Zaya, his favorite champion, taken away from him. LeBlanc and Tristana both taken away from Zetui because he excels at those champions. And honestly, because Tristana on the mid lane these days is absolutely disgusting, so it makes mm -hmm. sense in all of the senses. Taken away by Alia Bank team, but Kaisa has been left open. And if you left Kaisa open, what naturally happens? She gets picked. 
And which is a good thing is she can also be flexed. She can be flexed to the bot. She can be flexed in the mid. There's a lot of different <laughs> ways to do it. But Wolves just instantly answer with a combo of Kogma and Brom. And I am really excited to see that. I love it because Wolves are putting Ali a bank team on a timer. Because yes, Kaisa is a champion who really needs to get accelerated to her three item power spike. But Kogmo is the thing that puts the enemy team on the timer. As long as Wolves can drag the game for as long as possible, make it 30, 40 minute game. Kogmo is going to deal a lot of damage in the lead. But look at what Alia Bank are doing. They're answering with their own scaling tools. Azure is going to be the same case. Get the game dragged into the late game and he is going to be un to make it unplayable for the enemy team. We get a very old, good old handshake of um, ah. Corky and Azir in the mid lane. Interestingly enough, not only does it also matches the scaling, but it also puts Kogma in a very unpleasant position in a certain manner of it because Braum was there to protect him. Well, there's no way you can protect against the shuffle. Shuffle is a shuffle. It's untargetable. It's unblockable. There's nothing you can do about it. So in case Manny won't be able in any close proximity to Yushiro, and then there's going to be someone who will be able to jump on top of him. We might see Ashira not being able to actually influence those team fights. That basically brings him in, in a position of let's play safe because Manny has been playing Azir for God knows how many seasons and he's been already yeah. one of those very, very scared Azir players across the rift. Now, for Wolves, the idea for the next round is to get rid of the champions that can get to Kogmo and lock him on the play. So the ban of Vi makes total sense. It's also something that Adi plays quite a lot. And they are removing Renekton from Maddox. Honestly, Renekton is just a general pick that you need to be you, that you need to remove from the game because he dominates the lane and he tends to be a very nasty split pusher as well. But for Maddox, who really likes to play champions with a lot of uh, favor into them in the mid game and with a lot of split pushing potential I don't think that this one ban is going to do him any harm. He still has a lot of things he can dig into in his champion pool AB in the meantime Put a lot of pressure onto Yonatus to make sure that he's not getting his hands on Iva or Rek'Sai He's going to pivot it into a, a little bit of an unexpected direction. He's going to be Viego picked up for him Another champion that can either set things up rather well, or if needed, just basically decimate the entire enemy team, should you give him good resets. And he's actually looking to pick up some good resets already. So you have Kaisa, you have Jax, who's an incredible reset, and let's see what's going to be the last pick for AB, which might bring even more good resets along the way. To be honest, Nautilus is such a good first reset on a team fight. You get into him and immediately you add so much additional control to your team always very lovely for Viego to happen. He also will need prolonged fights with his team in order to mm. get those reasons, but look at that. Adi is replying with another pocket aged pick of his own that's going to be leasing for him. So we have a lot of proactiveness in the early game from both of these junglers. They want to have those little skirmishes, but where are they going to be getting those skirmishes? Because if you look across the lines, everybody wants to just sit back and scale. Pretty much, yeah. So that brings you to a question of how are they going to try to path it? their way into the game. Interestingly enough as well, Lee Sin is the champion that Jonas haven't played this season. So theoretically, oh. you could even say that maybe it's the champion that he doesn't excel uh, as much at. So I'm going to be quite interested to see how exactly we're going to see the dynamic between Viego and Lee Sin. In the meantime, Xante has been locked in for his zero. So what we see is a very standard handshake of Xante and Jags. And most likely we can just leave the top lane as this sort of, you know, <laughs> deserted island of no, Ile de Muerte. Let's put it this way. There are two the, cursed the what, no? pirates. Ile de Muerte. There's two cursed pirates, Jack Sparrow and Captain Barbosa, that are destined to never die and just always fight because nobody's going to go to them and just, you know, you, you settle your differences on your own. Wait, that's a reference. Where is it from? Captain Jack Sparrow and Captain Barbosa, really? Oh. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> With Ina when was Dimuerte? the last time I watched that? And that was really long time ago. Apparently too long time ago. That's okay. a big mistake, yeah, actually. It's a sense. great movie. I know. Yeah, maybe I, I know what I'm going to do on the weekend, you know? I, I think I have a plan now. Thank you very much. But very well. let's get back to this game because, yeah, interesting things are happening in the drafts. And we spoke a little bit yesterday with Maguire about the drafts in the best of fights and how different they are from the best of ones. Because in the first draft, usually everybody's just, you know, looking at each other, maybe not very respectfully, but, you know, 
trying to measure the enemy team, trying to understand what they're made of, how they want to be approaching the game. And after the first game, it is usually when we see the things getting accelerated. But here, nobody is waiting for anything. Everybody is going for very carry-oriented pick with a lot of damage in the late game. And I love seeing it. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere around the bot lane we actually had a lot of action even in the early because there is not a lot spread up with Kaiser, for example, on the side of Alia Bank team. A lot of kill pressure on him, especially if you add Lee Sin to that, that's going to be a lot of pressure in general towards the Wolves, especially because their AD carry is absolutely not escapable. For Kogmo, everything is going to be about surviving the first half of the game as much as possible, because if he succeeds at that, he is going to become a killing machine. He's going to be an entire menace pretty much on the Rift, uh, definitely. And the other thing that is actually interesting, when we were talking about the drafts of the best of fives, I feel like there's always two ways you can try to approach it. One way being let's measure each other up and not, you know, kind of do anything. And the other way is let's just put the pedal to the metal try to basically slide through that best of five series, get an easy 3-0, go home, rest, and prepare for the next one, right? We don't really... Uh, we don't really expect most of the times this to happen, but sometimes it does, and I feel like it's a great example of such. Right? Because there is a lot of, not only the AD carries or the bot lane that you're talking about, but I really have my eyes set upon the junglers and the main laners. Both of them can be really influential when it comes to how the team fights are going to go and how the setup is going to go, because we have Corky with his package that it may turn around any fight for the objective pretty much when it comes to the dragon, when it comes to the baron, it doesn't really matter. And then the same tool just works a little bit differently. Manny possesses on the other side of the map, right? With Azir and his shuffle, you can pretty much destroy the entire team fight and make it go entirely your team's way if needed. So my question is how these mid laners are going to approach it. I know we've seen it thousands of times, but it's still something that keeps me awake at night, I would say. <laughs> right, I know, I know. It has been quite a long time th that I haven't seen this mid lane matchup, and to be honest, there's were some happy times that I've had until Kaisa, AP Kaisa and uh, Rumble started to completely destroy my beautiful dream. But here we are, back at the basics, and it makes sense, because Azure is starting to regain the popularity on the pro scene. We see him quite a lot recently, much more compared to what it was before, because of his amazing scaling, because of how well he works on his three item power spike, that you can pair up with your Kaisa's three item power spike and have a team that wins pretty much every single team fight, plus a lot of control that he brings in. You know, Azir is just in a good spot. And we have seen some teams struggling to find a good answer into him because you can pick something that is going to dominate the lane, like Silas, for example, from Illumina Gaming several attempts to stop Azir and even getting some kills on Azir as a result, but the scaling cannot compete with him. So you need something, in theory, that is going to match the scaling and what is going to be on the mid lane. You can opt into Tristana. Tristana is great into Azir because she has really strong laning phase and because after that she scales really well into the late game after having a little bit of a downtime in the mid game. But Corky is the most obvious answer that comes to mind because mm -hmm. he brings the same terrain controlling tools into the team fights as long as there is a package on him. He scales pretty much on the same level as Azir does. And he doesn't die in the lane. So everything looks good here. Just for the record, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to go into the game in just a few seconds, uh, or in a few moments rather, not seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, see, that's the timing is there. But yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree. And this is what brings me to such a feeling of being awakened at, right, at night, right? Because both of these players will have to use their terrain control with exact precision if they want the team fights to go in the way of their team. And in order to do that, it's just, it's going to be really um, curious to see how both of these mid laners are going to approach the game. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump straight into the Summoner's Rift as we are approaching our second best of five in this playoffs. It's Aliobank team versus Iron Wolves. It's their own rivalries clashing from the previous season. Let's see who comes up on top. Now let's set our priorities straight for this game. In the late game, it is going to be Shiro, Sven, Smarty and ZTY that we will have to keep our eyes on. But before that, before the scaling hits them, who do we need to look at? I still think that Toplin can actually bring us some juicy things because 
if Maddox goes super aggressively on Hishiro, if he wants to force him into going into extended fights over and over, Hishiro is going to find himself in a trouble spot and might give away a kill, especially after the first item hits for Jax. This is when he feels very much um, ready and able and capable of going onto the enemies. And apart from top lane, it is the junglers that need to be our focus for the early to mid game. Junglers and supports, because both of the junglers are starting from the different parts of the map right now, with Yonatis, who is going to be rotating towards the bot side of the map. And I do think that eventually the junglers will meet on either the mid lane or the bot lane, because the game is going to be all about these two lanes and how well you as a jungler can transfer them into the mid and late game. Of course, we've talked about the importance of both Kogma and Kaisa into this game, and if you don't make sure that he's going to scale comfortably and be able to actually destroy the enemy team later on, then you might find yourself in a very tricky spot. Let's see what they will actually do. Let's see how are they going to try to approach it. For now, Wolves are having troubles with good trades. And would already taken a few of the punches now and there. Addy now only... Oh, level 2 actually being hit with the flash forward already used together with a cleanse from Svens. Hook coming in onto Braum with the ignite drop down as well. W is going to be tanked by Yashiro. So not a lot from that exchange. Only two summoners spelled traded for three on the side of AB. But the health damage is there. The idea for Alia Bank is to try to get the flash out of Hishiro because as long as Kogma has the flash, he should feel in his lane pretty safe. Especially because he also has Brom. Look at that. Brom just gets the hook for his AD carry. Brom gets the W from Kaisa for his AD carry. Brom does everything. But if Alia Bank managed to get the flash out of Hishiro, this is when they need to go super aggressive. This is when they need to try to force death of Hishiro as soon as possible. Because. Basically, Kogma doesn't really have any ways of escaping that fight, right? What he can do is he can yeah. slow somebody down, theoretically, uh, but that's pretty much about it. Yeah, and then he can die. He can explode after he died, so he can theoretically die two times. Luckily, not, not giving two kills to the enemy team, because that would have been awkward. But one way or the other, he doesn't really have a lot of resources into actually saving himself from the enemy. So that yeah. combination with Brom pretty much makes sense, and for now, a lot of that safety basically health and safety falls onto the shoulders of uh, Elliewood. <laughs> yeah for now doing his job yeah. quite splendidly though tanking quite a bit of things bringing ba uh, back the refillable potion because he sees that Svensson Minimagic is doing um pretty proactive things on 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 the lane trying to make as many trades as possible so picking up that that refillable potion can be a really good economical decision if you want both junglers Yonatus. are now here, Adi and Yonatus. Yonatus has been spotted in a wall, though. And that's a sign for Alibank that they don't want to be forcing anything onto Wolves. They have their jungler around, so if Wolves start anything, they're going to be prepared. But they don't necessarily want to be forcing anything right now. They stay under the turret. You can see Adi's already rotating away from their bolt and Everything looks fine. And so far, it's the top lane with the majority of exchanges between each other. But still, we have no first blood approaching the five minute mark. Approaching the first dragon spawn in this game, which is going to be the... Uh, the Mountain Drake, so not the highest priority, but still a very nice one for the leading phase, but with no clear prior for either of the teams, either on the bot lane or on the mid lane, it doesn't look like an opening for any of them to just go in and get the Drake. Given the fact that bot lane doesn't seem to be gankable right now for neither of the, of the junglers, you could th theoretically argue that it's time to maybe redirect your attention to the mid lane, since uh, ultimates are just going to be hit for both of these, um, for both of these mid laners, their, their ultimates are going to make sure that either Corky will be able to chip away Manny a little bit before the fight starts or deliver a final blow if needed. And for Manny, of course, that means a very good setup to help Addy actually secure the kill. So, theoretically, with ultimates now kicking in, you could see that both of these junglers trying to bring a bit more attention to mid lane. I have to wait and see, however. Mm -hmm. We'll have to. Yes, I, I can't wait to see more action, to be honest, but we are pretty early in the game, so it's fine. We will wait a little bit longer. Both of the AD carries are looking into getting to their level 6. Level 6 are already hit for the mid laners, but you have to remember that level 6 is not necessarily the biggest asset for Koki. He needs to wait for 5 more minutes until his first package is going to arrive. And 
I'm always, it always sparks my curiosity whenever I see a Corky to see how his team and especially his jungle are going to approach Drake's because you can try to go for the first Drake immediately when it spawns or you can start a fight. It. Hooks in Ellie Wood. Ellie Wood takes a lot of damage from Sven's in the process. Addy and Unitas are going to meet there with a lot of damage coming already from that lease and Exhaust has been brought down and Ellie has to try to flash away. Will do that in the last second and get himself to safety oh. with the Q! Sonic Strike with the double kill! Addy brings his team two of them but instantly pays with his life. In the meantime, Attix versus Hijira. Hijira running for his life. Here comes the flash forward. Hijira has a flash of his own all out now been used. He is fine and in the safety. All of a sudden, six minutes in, but action breaks out everywhere on the map. I think the action on the bot in there is the most important one for obvious reasons because the first blood and the double kill for Ari is a huge thing for Alia Punk. But I think it is especially important that it's not just Ari who got the first blood, even though that is important. It is Lee who is already sitting on a Whipper. He's going to have to get to his Gold Drinker super quickly and Gold Drinker or whatever, which, whichever move he decides to go in after the whip, after getting such a nice start for himself, is going to be absolutely massive for the fights around the objectives because right now Ari is massively ahead of Yonatis and pretty much everybody else on the map and we know just how well Listen feels in the early stages of the game how much damage he has there yeah the amount of damage that pre even pre level 6 Listen has is just unbelievable and we pretty much saw the representation mm -hmm. of that just a few seconds ago with QE used with the Son Sonic Wave and uh, the uh, Dragon's Rage used and that was all that needed to chunk pretty much 70% of HP of Yonitz's. Now you have to be very, very careful when moving across uh, moving across the jungle. If you see Addy there, then you might want to go into a different direction. Dragon is mm -hmm. on the map, however, neither, neither of the teams are looking to try to claim it. With the rotation right now, it seems like their priority is the Herald. And Addy already started, already begins to try to prep it for the team. That means that Svens actually can return, maybe try to look for more farm. Judging by the pinks, however, seems like Wolves are looking to trade objectives. Interesting enough, but to be fair, it makes sense, because again, Adi is so ahead of everybody else on the map, that you as Wolves don't really want to go and risk having a fight with him at the Herald. You're fine giving it away and rotating towards the first Drake in the game. It messes up a little bit your timers for the package for ZTY, but you don't necessarily need to use the package only for the sake of the upcoming dragons. You can decide what else you want to do with the power that gets unleashed for you whenever the packages are available for your Corky. But yes, this is an exchange of objectives, so Wolves get something on the map, but just as an exchange for Alia Bank team. And the first Heralds are going to bring so much additional gold to Alia Bank. They already are slightly, but leading in terms of the overall team gold, of course, mostly thanks to Adi in that sense. But with the first Herald, if used correctly, that's going to set them up for a really nice path. But the question is, where you do you drop it, right? Because right now, mm -hmm. one of the most obvious places seems to be mid, because that's where it is. it seems to be the most safest way to actually drop it. In the ball lane, yes, you could do that, but in order to do that, you need another fight like you just had. You need another gang from Addy. You need another pretty much explosive entrance into the lane, which can be a bit tricky because, yes, Addy got two kills. He's already sitting on Gold Drinker. It is really good for him. But Yashiro has one kill as well. And he will be dealing a bit more damage. Let's see if he can do more. As Minimagic starts the fight, here comes Yonatus, here comes Adi as well. Death charge onto Yashira as they're trying to kick him up with the perfect Dragon Rage. I think I am cursing this. As right now, ABR decimating Wolves just right on the place. It's a clear 3-0. They've managed to pick up three kills for themselves. And they might just as well drop the Herald right here. Okay, listen, I know you want to say how good Adi was in this fight. But I think Minimachuk deserves all the praise. Again and again, he proves to us just how great he is with his Nautilus. Everything is pixel perfect here, starting from his hook, going all the way into his ultimate, the depth charts, and then just chasing wolves and not letting them get away. You can clearly see the reason why this support is part of our all pro team number two, because he is one of the best supports we have in Ultra League at this moment. And he keeps proving it to everybody. And it's just honestly such a joy to watch him on those engaged supports. The overall combination that we just witnessed from Minimatric and Addy pretty much proves how big of a menace both of them are with the perfectly timed death charges and perfectly timed Dragon's Rage just to make sure that things are 
fully under the control of AB, if you want. Pun is in, sort of intended, sort of not intended. <laughs> okay. As it puts Wolfson not in the best situations. Now, there is no lead as they had it in the bot lane. 500 gold falls into the advantage of Sven's. 2,000 is the difference between Addy and Yonatus, which is nothing you want to see, which puts, of course, AB on a very good position. Let's see if they can capitalize on that, because let's not forget, Lee Sin is really powerful in early, even in mid as well, but he's nowhere near as close as powerful in the late game as you would like him to be. Now, though, living forward to his potential, another Sonic Wave might be just enough. With the Dragon's Rage, Sonic Wave is just all too easy for Addy with the damage, with the skill shots, picks up the kill. Zetsu oh! gets hooked with... Whatever that was, Flash preemptively used there already. Addy will pick up that kill with no problem. Tries to get out. Now he's going to get stunned. But there is no aggro on him. Trying to get out onto the Raptors, but they're not there. But it's just... It's all easy for Addy. He's really making it look easy. Man, Alia Banker too good today. And Addy apparently will cap with the right foot. He got up with the right foot because that is a good game from him. We love seeing Addy on those carry potential junglers and we love seeing him when he's having a good game not overstepping anywhere are they fighting again oh my god uh, they are by the looks of it yes they are all out is available gonna use it just right now tries to get out for his life with the counter strike knock up perfectly time his zero out brilliant footwork from the top plane of walls that's his zero for you everybody yes he is great like that and it is hard to get away from jax who is already deciding to lock onto you but xante is one of those top laners who can actually do that if everything is timed out correctly including his ultimate and you can see again for the second time already that his zero is the man who knows how to time out everything perfectly for him because of that he still keeps the top lane in control it's not going too much in anybody's favor he is farming steadily he is getting in the experience he's getting the lane in a stable position but right now we're talking about the next strike that's going to spawn in 40 seconds and there is a package from zetua apparently because we had a look at him at the lane Ah, and this is yeah, just... this is just it, criminal. Have I already told you how much I love Minimarchic? I think I have. I mean, this is this is just criminal. This hitbox from Nautilus is mm -hmm. basically illegal, and I would like to file a lawsuit against Nautilus if that is possible. Yeah, I would like to right. do that. Because that just had no trouble hitting there. Addy, looking mm -hmm. for a Sonic Wave, finds it onto Elliewood. Doesn't exactly look to go underneath the turret, at the very least not yet, with the Nautilus, especially in the shadows. But... Alia Bank have full control over the river. If they want to pick up that second drink, they can. It's a camp tank drink, which is not exactly the best, but you still mm -hmm. have the option to pick that up. And he would. I think he knows that he's spotted. Yes, he is. Oh, coming, connecting onto Manny now. Jonas is trying to do at least something. Shuffle onto two. Yashiro's gonna get knocked up in the air. With the death shot, Sven's killer's instinct. Sven. He's gonna try to secure that kill, and he does. In the meantime, the cleanse has been used, and uh, Shiro tries to fire away. ZTI comes up over here with today. Otherwise, Xante, they pick up one kill. Minimatic flashes over the wall, tries to run for his life, but he's not gonna do that as he's gonna get picked up as well. That's a second for ZTY. And Wolves managed to turn this around with the help of the top lane mid laner. Addy now might have overstepped here. The stun coming in through from the passive as he flashes out. Another being used, but he gets out on the W. Just on a slither of his HP, that might have been so costly for the team, but it's all right. He manages to play it out. Ooh. Maybe not yet. No. Look at that. Dragon's Rage is, I believe, available, and yes, it is. Gets the kill just on the spot. He is unstoppable in this game. No way. He just got another kill. No way. Is it too? I just walked into that bush come on no vision for him whatsoever they only knew which direction Adi was running away they didn't know where he decided to sit and hide and that cost it why we just were happy for him for a second when he got those two kills in the fight finally started getting in some gold and getting in some prior and being super useful in those fights and then all of a sudden boom he dies just like that and grants another kill for Adi. 7-1-1 goes listen already that is insane that is why the carry pick is working for Alia Bank team, while for Wolves, absolutely not. Very much the opposite. And that is sad to see. Because to be. I mean, I did expect that sure? for a second, but I thought it's not going to go down to that. Yes, Yashira scores a kill because Hollywood was able to land a Q on him. That's the Braum Kogma combination for you. As soon as the passive locked in, with the amount of attack speed that Yashira already has, 
You're almost a dead man. You saw Addy having troubles. He had to invest a flash in order to get out from that sun. Well, Suez didn't have one, and look how that ended. However, there is one thing that still worries me about Ishiro, because Ishiro has damage, and he is going to have damage, and he is a good player, and the pickup of Kogmo is really good here. But the reason why there is Brom for him, and by the way, yes, we have the ripple of how exactly Spence went down, and the quick answer is a lot of damage from Ishiro. But Brom is not just there to control... Brom is not just there to control enemies for Ishiro, for his Kogmo. He's also there to peel for him, to protect him, because Kogmo needs a lot of protection. And usually, we see a utility jungler added to a draft like that, because the team knows that they they need to be dancing around their Kogmo. They need to make sure nobody can get to him. And in this scenario, everybody can get to him with no problem. It's only Ali Wood who can stay on the back lane and try to protect Ishiro at all costs. Adi has no problem getting to him. Money. If he wants to, he will. Maddox and Sven's really straightforward. They're all in champions. They will be going on to Yashiro with Yashiro having no way of escaping as long as he doesn't have the flash available. That is what worries me a lot about Wolves because Alia Bang team have already cracked this code and they're using it against Wolves. Something that we already mentioned in the drafts, right? It's good that you have the means to protect, but can you actually protect against so many enemy tools mm -hmm. that they actually possess? We've been talking about Manny in that particular regard and his uh, shuffle. We will have to see how the the, the later team fights are going to pan out because if you think about it, is there a way for them to protect the shield? That I believe there is, but it all really depends on the execution. And I feel like a lot of those things always get caught up a little in the well depends on the execution does it work on paper yes it does in the meantime the overall state of the map is not as flashy as you'd love it to be with or for walls at the very least as their jungler is falling four thousand gold behind addy is having a blast of a game perhaps one of the most shiny of this season AD carry of the enemy is also feeling rather well. The two items already completed, now building slowly towards his third. Yashiro falling behind about a thousand, but he has completed boots, so I guess that's at least something. That's something, exactly. <laughs> no better way to put it, to be honest. It's just boots. And if you compare Boots plus Dirk to two item Kaiser, that is not exactly the spot where Kogmo wants to be. And usually, it's not too big of a deal for Kogmo because he waits until his item come until his items come in. But the wait is being made really long by Alia Bank team. They are stopping Wolves, they are slowing them down. The difference between the teams is around 5k gold right now. Alia Bank are firmly in control of this game, and that's really worrying me. Unless Wolves can manage to survive for as long as possible not give away too many kills to Alibank right now, especially to Adi, and wait out until the scaling is no longer for Adi when he's going to be more of a utility and less of a carry, and when your carries are going to be online. Just get to this point and then see if you can do something about the game. There's another problem that rests on the Summoner Fruit, however, because the soul of this game is the Infernal Soul. Now, mm -hmm. Wolves can give this away, and by the looks of it, they'll have to because the Dragon is already dead. We're coming in through now, Ellie. Drops down the Glacier Fish and not going to find even a single target. Zeti White gets himself and delivers himself from that teleport. Tries to fire at least at someone. Addy dancing around. The Valkyrie has already been used, so there's no package now available. Matix tries to go all in onto his Zero and tries to peel him away from the enemies. As Ellie Wood now gets onto the charge and the Dragon's Rage onto Zeti White. He's instantly out. That's a knockup and a shot down. The fight just gets into all a brawl. There's an absolute chaos. And he's zero in the midst of it all. As Jonathan tries to make the hero play. Doesn't really find it. All out. Now being used on to Manny, but it's not exactly something that you needed for. Matix in the meantime decimates the backline of the enemies. It was a chaotic fight, but AB stand tall. Even though they're injured, but now they have the ace and they have the Baron. Man, I have questions. I have questions to Iron Bulls here. Because in the start of the fight, it looks desperate to them, but they managed to stop the bleeding because they kill Adi on the spot when he flies into their back lane. They are all grouped together. They are protecting Ishiro. They are protecting ZTY, so all, everybody on the back lane. And it looks good for them. The only thing that Wolves need to do right now is to back the hell off. Because there is nothing to fight for right now. If you don't fight, there is no immediate Baron threat from Ali Bang team. The dragon is already down. Nothing for you to fight for here. Look at that. Look at how grouped up they are. Look at how Hijiro is jumping up onto Adi immediately to stop him. Jumping up on Maddox to stop him because they need to protect Hijiro and they're doing their absolute best. But why do you turn at that point? 
Why do you continue going on to the enemy? Why do you do that? Why do you give them the free kills? It's something I don't understand in the rules actions in this game. So TY, however, is probably quite happy with the pickup of the shutdown. Now he has two items completed with the Trinity Force and the Static Sheath, slowly trying to work towards his third, as Shiro is going to pick up his second. The Baron is now in the hands of AB. They are leading in terms of going to this game. They are leading in terms of map control in this game. And the timer is now, it feels like, ticking against the walls rather for them. They need more time to have Corky online. They need more time to have Kogma online. But they might not have that time. With Matix already going towards his second item. Addy being absolutely on fire in this game. And their turrets already being sieged. Yeah. They will not have the inner turrets right now on the bot lane and on the mid lane. That is a disastrous state of the map for Wolves because they cannot fight from here. They still need more time, they still need more farm. And while Alibang team are pushing in really heavily, they might not even take down their inhibitors. They will leave them up, making sure that no additional gold is going towards Wolves and especially towards Ishira because Ishira has uh, the Ginsu. It is a pretty good item for him. But Kaisa is getting to her Ginsu as well, and that's going to be the third item for her. And this is where Kaisa becomes a huge menace to the enemy team. And she's going to get there rather soon. Because look at Aliobank. Look at how much gold they're getting from the Baron buff. They're making a lot out of it. Dragon's Rage in the meantime, you use onto Ellie Wood. Might be looking for more here, but no, instead they're just having their waves cleared as Manny continues to push him through the mid lane. Gets down the first turret, might be looking for an inhibitor here. They be are trying now to maybe get themselves a second line as well. Can't really do it though, because the clear is just way too good. ZTY, you sure? They're both able to clear the waves rather quickly. Especially with that static shift picked up by ZTY. Finally the turret is getting siege, but they can't really get any closer, look at that! Wolves are able to withstand a few of those waves and force AB to return back to the base because they have only 10 more seconds of the Baron buff, which means there's no real reason to stay here. Yeah, I better to use them for the empowered recalls and get back into the game quickly. But yes, Wolves have a lot of wave clear, if you cannot forget about that. Together with Yushira and ZTY, they can cut through the waves extremely quickly. And that's why it's a good idea that Alibank opened up the inhibitor on the mid lane but didn't take it down because otherwise they would put Wolves in a pretty nice situation when they don't even need to leave the base to get the cold going their way. And now they're itemizing up. There's going to be third item on Yashiro sooner or later. It's not looking too bad, but it's not looking good either. And that's the issue for the Wolves right now. They need so much more time to get fully online. And I, <laughs> I'm worried for them. If they have another fight like the previous one, that could be game over. The biggest problem is that in 15 seconds the Infernal Drake is going to come up online and AB have already stacked two. Yes, it's not as bad as it could have been for Wolves that they have picked up that first Drake. It's been a very good investment because that bought them a little bit more time. But the Infernal Assault was not something that you want to give away to Azir, to Kai'Sa, to champions that will possess more damage later we go into the game. The Dragon seems like already has been started. In the meantime, Wolves are doing a different thing. They decide, okay, we have to give it away because we cannot fight for it. Therefore, what we're going to do is try to pick up objective bounties, pick up as much gold as we can to make sure that our carries actually can start feeling like they're online. Yes, exactly. It's the fight for the gold for them right now. They're still racing against the money and they're racing... Not rather against the time. They're racing with the time, but they're racing against the money that Alibank have been holding throughout the whole game. That's why they're keeping his hero as a showstopper for Maddie, so he's constantly on the split push duties. That's why they were getting the money on the side to why on the top lane with Yonat is just being around, not even taking the experience or the goal, just shadowing his mid laner. And Kogmo was on the mid lane doing pretty much the same, but they're still not on the third item, neither of them. ZTY actually needs just a tiny bit more to pick up his uh, infinity infinity edge. I believe it is, what, 840 gold, something like that, that you need in order to, to complete the item? I would say it's Bloodthirster, judging by the Vampiric Scepter. Oh, it's the Vampiric Scepter, right. You can't have the infinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right I confused so, the Vampiric yeah. Scepter with... Um... It's okay. Ah! The old, the old League habits yeah. are kicking in, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, well, regardless of that, it's still not that that guy I think he needs in order to pick that one. We'll see. However, the top lane turret has been destroyed by Manny. Which is really hard for a wolf now to do anything actually when it comes to the Baron. It will come up in 10 seconds. Now they have even less terrain to work with and even more need to put down vision to actually see where AB is. As they chase them down to the pit. And they don't see where AB is, and they already were dying before that in this game when they couldn't see where exactly AB were waiting for them. With with AB still being so ahead of everybody on the side of fools, you cannot allow them to catch you off guard. You need to find some movements around them. You need to make sure they cannot catch you, but it's so hard for rules. At least they've put in the vision here. They see the river. They see the pit, so it's looking better for them. They can refocus on something else. Oh, now the Parkations are too wide. They need to start a fight, but can they even? And the good thing is that he has that third item right now, so he can fight. They're going to use the package right there because they see Abby going for a flank maneuver. Instantly recognizing that, trying to have a way around it. Dragon Rage already has been used, and Addy will be almost killed there on the spot. Stunned as well. Matic's in the midst of it all. Ellie, though, is tanking all of it. Wolves! have managed to stand tall and bring Addy down. Now let's see if they're going to be able to do anything more because the tower is standing there, not allowing them to go anywhere further. AB recognizing the dinus of the situation and they fall back with only one member of the team lost. But still, what a reaction from Wolf here. Is Maddox waiting for something? No, he's just clearing out the enemy's jungle. Okay, it's all right. But yes, the wolves found the way to work around Adi because Adi is the biggest problem for them still. Yeah, Wait, starting the Baron. They still have 10 seconds before Adi is going to be up, but that is a risky move from them. They don't have the third item on Ishiro, but they're keeping Ishiro away from the danger. Is it going to work? Mattox has the teleport available to himself. Addy's just now Addy. getting resurrected. 3k, 2k, they can do it and they will. Now that you have to get out, he's zero. Get out! They're he doing it! The Wolves have done it! They have basically stolen the Baron underneath the Nexus of AP! The audacity of them! I love it for wolves. Listen, already, for the second move from them, I am keeping my eyes on Yashiro and I love what wolves are doing with him. They finally realized, hey, everybody wants to get on top of Yashiro, especially Adi has some beef with Yashiro, apparently. It feels very personal from his side. So what do we do as wolves? We stay all together, clutched, making sure that Adi cannot isolate Yashiro away from us. And if we do exactly that, we will have enough control and enough chunkiness to stop him and enough damage to kill him on the spot. And if you look at Yashiro, if you get the replay, look at how far he is from everybody. He is far from the fight when Adi jumps in and wolves turn it around. He is not even in the pit. He is out of the pit because he knows if Wolves manage to pull this trick, he will need to get out as quickly as possible. He does exactly that. And now we're on another timer, because Wolves, do they have Baron in their hands now right now? Yes, they do. You're sure with the third item. That's why with the third item. It looks great, but now it's the next target that you need to put yourselves onto, which is the Infernal Drake. 15 seconds. You cannot give those away right now to AB, because that means that all of that fight, all of this audacity that just Wolves shown have been for nothing, because AB is already setting on the... Soul point. Now both of the teams are just dancing around. Sven's firing away his Ws, bringing so much injuries to the enemy team. But AB are first to take control over the river. Keep your eyes on Yashiro and Zetuai because they're going to be the most important things in this fight from the side of Wolves and Adi from the side of Alia Bank. And Sven's oh, no. of course, to look at the damage he's dealing. Doing a lot. Matix in the meantime is already Maddox. on the back side. Ellie needs to retreat. Wolves cannot fight for this. They realize they cannot fight for this. And they know they need to give this dragon away. It hurts so much. <laughs> but if you don't, you might just go get aced. And if you will, that may just as well mean the end of this game. It hurts a lot, yep. but it's better to try at least to fall down a bit. Or, or fall back, yes. rather. Rather than to that just was a small swing it on the yeah. flop. A very hard one, but a very smart one, because if Mari's got his spunky maneuver, that would be the end of Wolves as we see them. 
Hook coming in through with the death charge onto Braum. Braum is tanking as much as he can. Gets out on it. Yashiro already takes so much damage from the enemy soldier. Smatix picks up the first kill. Minimatrix is gold golden. The fight just breaks through everywhere there as Zetia gets down. Shuffle being used as well. Yashiro firing away. Can he clear the house? That's the question. He's still alive. And here we're just uh, now getting punched there. We're looking to do at least something. Inhibitors are now falling down. And AB are pushing through. Yashiro needs to try to do at least something. But can he do anything mm -hmm. as his turrets are already falling by the looks of it? He's dancing around the Q connect. He goes gold and nothing he can do. First game goes on to Team Alia Bank. And you have to give it to Adi and Minimagic. I will say it's both of them, but Adi with his relentlessness and the clear understanding of Aliabang, how they need to approach this game and who needs to be their main target was absolutely on the spot. And the moment this first double kill fell into Adi's hands, you could pretty much already realize, hey, the game is going too well into Aliabang's hands unless Wolves do something right here, right now, but they couldn't do anything. That was an explosive game one with Alio Bank team proving to us that they are really here to try to make it a 3-0 sweep. While Wolves are proving that even if things are not going their way, they might have at least some aces in their sleeves. We'll have to see what they will be able to do in game number two and we will be back after a short break. Stay true to your lane and join Kia at the League of Legends EMEA Championship. Kia, movement that inspires.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, and it's time to prepare for game number two. Game one showed to us that Alia Bang team is looking to get a clean 3-0 sweep, and it's a question whether Wolves will be able to strike back. There is uh, the movie called The Empire Strikes Back, and this is The Wolf Strikes Back. Well, can they? Can they make the dream come true? Can they make it a reality? Because the first game, to be honest, wasn't too good of a look on them. After giving away the prey to Adi, they struggled to get it back. And even though the Baron move was good, it was just one move from them when they were so behind against the enemy team that it wasn't anywhere near enough to get them out of that situation. And again, we have to sing praises to Ali Bang team because it looks like they seriously prepared for this series. They are completely unleashing Adi. Mini Magic is a beast and everybody else is on a very quick follow-up. We are just right now seeing the replays from these fights. And to be fair, what cohesion shown us the duo of uh, jungle and support Addy and Minimagic have been exactly on point in the majority of these bot lane fights. And then through and through pretty much what we've seen is the level of preparation coming from them exactly as you've, as you've highlighted it. Because if you look at the statistics then you will see that the majority of fights for both of these teams have happened in the bot lane. And then a little bit of that happens in the mid lane. And that's exactly what we saw, what they saw uh, from game number one with Addy paying a lot of attention towards bot lane. A few more power moves came in there in the mid lane as well. And then it felt like the game pretty much span out of control of Wolves with only one particularly fantastic move, which was the fight uh, in which they managed to kill Addy and then just... I don't really want... I don't... I can't even say they took the Baron. I felt like they just sneaked it. It's like when you... Yeah. It's like in Skyrim when you put a bucket on the head of NPC before stealing something away <laughs> to make sure that they don't no. notice it. I feel like exactly no. what happened there. <laughs> oh, that's, I don't know if I love it or hate it, but that actually is exactly what happened in in this whole Baron situation. Yes, it was just one opening that was found and they used it. If only they had more openings like this in this game. If only in this fight, for example, they didn't decide to re-engage for no particular reason. Trying to get out mini magic. Mini magic is great, okay, but is he necessarily the target for you to go on to in a tough scenario already? I don't I don't I don't think so. That's the fight that we've been talking about just now. They've mm -hmm. uh, Wolves have found themselves a brilliant angle. But then we haven't seen anything more. And my question is, how are they going to approach the game number two? Because the idea for Wolves was there, but the execution, again, something that we very oftentimes see uh, in the majority of these games, the execution wasn't on point. What do they need to change and will they change it in order to actually try to bounce back in the game number two? I, I am worried about the Wolves. Because I think this is going to be another Zaya Bank coming in from Alia Bank team. And if they don't pick Zaya for Ishiro, I'm struggling to see what exactly he's going to be playing. Bulls this time are on the blue side. So at least that, if there is a good pick that Alia Bank give away to them, they are going to go for it. Most probably the Kogma Brown combination will not happen again because it's a little bit hard to execute on the blue side unless you go with it uh, with the B2, B3. But then again, if you're picking Kogma so early in your rotation, you are telling the enemy directly what you want to be doing with the rest of your draft and what you want to be doing in the game and you'll let them draft against you and against this poor Kogmo, which makes you wonder whether or not showing it so early in the previous draft was a good idea regardless it led to the loss of iron bulls and they need to get themselves back in this game because otherwise they are putting alia bank on 2-0 one more victory and they take it We've seen that a lot of success from Wolves happen when Yashiro is able to step up and do the thing. And in order for Yashiro to step up and do the thing, you need to give him those resources and make sure that he gets those resources, which falls under the, uh, on the shoulders of Yonatus as well. Let's see if they will be able to do it. And as I see your face, there's a ban of Xayah coming from Wolves and many other people. And I wonder what is the plan for them. Maybe they're looking actually to steal Kaiser for their own. Kaiser. Yeah, it looks like Kai's angle. Because why else would you ban Zaya from the enemy unless Alia Bank? Okay, Never mind. Can you? Oh, 
Jesus, I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to like create the story about you and about you sure and you're absolutely not helping me with these plans they buy up it. kaisa so what is the plan for the first big i don't know and Yishiro? that's why i love it is it still something for Yoshiro? i don't know uh, it's a rumble that's what they're going for they're going for rumble is wolves it, is it for are for repeatedly for rumble for Yoshiro? no yonages or his <laughs> Oh, he's zero. Sorry, I heard uh, Yonat is on for Yashiro, and I was like, Rumble bot? I mean, sign me in. <laughs> yeah. I, I, really, I really would love to see it. But, okay, so Rumble is getting picked. It's a flex pick. We don't know where it's going to go. In the meantime, Viego is being picked up by AB. Maybe they want to show how to play. <laughs> how yeah, to play. Yeah, that's exactly Viego. my thought. Maybe that's what they're trying to go for here. Manny's going to go for Azir. If it works, don't touch it, don't break it. But my question is, what's the going to be the B2, B3 for Wolves right now? Because, I mean, you can go for Rumble Brom combo again, but it didn't exactly work. You don't have Kaisi, you don't have Sire. You're going to give Aurelia to ZTY. The comfort pick. The Aurelia. I, I, I don't know how she feels against Azur, to be honest with you. Because I haven't seen this matchup in forever probably because it's a very rare combination on the mid lane but what does she have she has the damage she has the kill pressure she has an insane wave clear and she can yep. snowball really damn well so that's an interesting pickup for rules but it yeah, i think what is more important here is that it is an absolute comfort for zty he wants to be playing aurelius or tristanas and if one of them is available to him give it to him make the man happy and he might be just happy in this particular game. I also find it quite interesting that they picked up Aphelius, even though that Aphelius has received quite a bit of nerves. So I'm wondering how he exactly he is going to shine in this game. We have seen Nishiro to be very proactive on this champion, but I'm also interested in what they're going to pair it up with, because now Rakan is secure for Minimagic. It is another champion that he excels at. And either you pick up Nautilus right now to pair it with Aphelius, or you go in an entirely different direction. If I recall correctly, we've seen Enchantus very very often picked up for mm -hmm. Aphelius, but Enchantus are not particularly feeling well right now. Yeah, they're, man, they're not feeling well whatsoever. I am an Enchanter player, and that hurts my heart, but Enchanters are not the thing right now. It is all about Engagers, it is all about Nautiluses that you mentioned before, and I believe it would be a great pickup there for Elibut to work with the Shiro's Ophelius, but it's not available. So things like Leona, for example, maybe even a crazy Thresh for the ball plane of the Wolves is the other ideas that come to my mind. Crazy Thresh is like Thresh, but being painted like the Joker who's laughing when he's throwing a hook at you. I mean, yeah, I, I would love to see that. <laughs> now imagine this. In the meantime, Zeri yeah. locked in for Svins. Huh. Okay. I haven't okay. seen that sneaky one in a long time. I like it. Okay. A lot of scaling, a lot of damage can benefit from the static shift as well. We like it, we take it. And a Maokai for Maokai. Bulls. That is such a good pick. Into Zeri, into Rakan and Viego. Just in Wolf's Even Jero, Azir. because he's a really strong pick. And to be honest, he's just good for Yonatis because I strongly believe that while Yonatis is great at carries, right now the meta benefits the utility, jung utility jungler so much that when you already have someone to play around in your team, go for it with no hesitation. So that is on now locked in. So it's Rumble top, Aurelia mid. No, wait. Wait, I'm confused. Yes, Rumble jungle, Rumble jungle, Aurelia mid. And and Maokai support. Okay. 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 Maokai support. Okay. I mean, actually. That's Actually. quite interesting. It's strange. It's unbelievably strange. But it's very interesting if you think about it. Because what do you want to do with both of the ch with both champions that just like to jump around and do things while they're jumping? You want to root them, and you want them to knock them up in the air, or you want to stop them as soon as you're going to have level six. Can Maokai do that? Yes, he can. But that kind of brings me to another thing. Now, Rumble Jungle. Maokai support, 
Does that mean that wolves need to be constantly camping, camping bot lane because they have the the basically the only thing that will work on the entire summoner's drift to their fullest potential? It is root people with Maokai, drop down the equalizer, profit, refuse to elaborate. Cool guys, do not look at the explosions. This is basically how I see it, at the very least. So. Let's try to break it down, because this draft is very damn interesting. And by the way, by talking about wolves, because we were completely confused and bamboozled by that Maokai pick and Orn pick after that in there, there is all of happening for Maddox on the top lane of Ali oh, yeah. team, which is an interesting pickup, but he's going against Orn, and Olaf wants to dominate the lane. And Owen kind of works really well into those lane bullies, because he cannot bully the Owen out of his lane, so... I'm not sure. Let's see if Maddox. I like thing, seeing Maddox on things that have a lot of proactivity and a lot of kill pressure. But let's go back to the wolves right now because this mark, I, man, I like it. I like it a lot. I didn't expect it to be the support pick necessarily, but Maokai support is extremely fun. I played it a little bit back in the days when I was young and beautiful and played League of Legends a little bit, you know. It is really fun for you and for your team, not for the enemy team, because the bushes are completely out. And Vakan wants to be around the bushes, he wants to be jumping onto the enemies and back and forth from the bushes and using the lack of vision of the enemies against them. Maokai denies it. Now, what else do you want to be doing against the enemy team? Usually, just as anybody, or his jungler, for example, you want to be ganking them. You cannot do that, because Maka is going to put his little babies in all the bushes around. There is going to be a lot of vision, and even if you want to go on them, or if you and your AD carry want to go aggressive on the enemies, you provide a lot of control, you provide a lot of um, immediate lock on them. And the thing that I find the most interesting about this, Maka, and stay here with me, because... That's, I think that's really important, because Aphelius, what do we know about Aphelius? He wants the enemies to be going onto him, but he wants his teammates to be able to stop them before they actually get on top of Aphelius, because he's short range, so he wants to be fighting in that short range proximity. Maokai, as a jungler, would like to be the one to start the fights from afar, so he throws in the ultimate and then the rest of his team follows up and goes onto the enemies. Maokai, as a support, doesn't need to do it. He can peel for his AD carry and stay with him and be more of a defensive tool even with his ultimate. And I absolutely adore this for Wolves. If they press all their buttons correctly, this is going to work out so well. There's one problem to this whole thing, mm. which is Viego. Because, yes, definitely the bushes are going to be under control. Eliwood is going to make sure that uh, Jungler is not allowed to come as close as you would like him to. But it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. there's always going to be this field of saplings that you can break through. Overall, Maokai will receive quite a bit of damage into his face one way or the other. And if Adi will be able to get on top of him together with Minimagic, because they have a lot of control, they should be able to pretty much burst him down. And as soon as that happens, you give one of the greatest resets to Adi, and that is a pretty much confirmed double kill. As soon as you have a mistake there, you can pay for it really dearly. Okay, I see what you're talking about. That means that we're going back to the point of that wolves really need to press all their buttons correctly. Because if they make mistakes, that is going to be a game that they will have to pay for quite dearly. They rely on Rumble getting ahead because he wants to be ahead in the early game, not so much, but in the mid game, this is where he absolutely shines and he needs his items. ZTY, Irelia doesn't really like playing from behind. You, of course, can always use her as a split pusher, but she doesn't really like it. Aphelius, he needs to get his three items. That's going to take quite a lot of time. And if anything goes wrong with ZTY, with Yashiro, with Yonatis, you are left with no other damage because you have opted into a top lane tank. And I know you're going to say that Orn deals the damage, Orn does everything. He's assassin, is what is he? The, the, the true icon of League of Amazing. Legends, but... Yeah, but he's not a wants... carry. Yes, he is. He's not a carry. Yes, he no. is. He's no. No. Yes, he is. Yes, but no, he's not a carry. Exactly. You said yes. He's See, that's, that's it. He's not going to one-shot anybody on the side of Alien. Yes, he he's can. going to start the fight. He's going to control, but no. Have you seen those videos, actually, when Orn, uh, I, I believe it wasn't in this season. I think it was quite a few seasons ago, but still, when he was able to one-shot AD carry. I don't remember. 
I actually do, and I, I, like I remember laughing very, uh, pretty much a lot. I think we were even laughing with the fake one about it when we just saw, uh, I think it was Jin or something like that. I, I just really distinctively remember that video with uh, Orn just approaching him, knocking him up in the air, using his his flamethrower, then boink with with his with his hammers, and then just enemy has been has been slain. Solo killed by Orn because he can. I'm not accusing you of anything. That actually could happen because if Orn locked onto somebody, especially somebody like Jin who has no ways of escape, yeah, that could happen. But I don't think for Wolves necessarily in this draft, Orn is going to be the powerhouse, the solo baller carry. Malix can be a solo carry because he's Olaf. Olaf doesn't care. Yeah. Olaf runs in, he gets the kills. If he gets the prior in the early game, that could be a game over for the enemy team. But Orn, mm, not the same type. Which is something that actually Wolves probably do remember, because in the previous season, they had Gabo playing for them, right? And Gabo <laughs> has been yeah. a very big top laner for them, the one who actually liked to play on quite a lot, and it was working mm -hmm. rather well for them. For now, let's get back to the game itself, because what we see is AB and Wolves pretty much just exchanging bits and punches there. Both of the AD carries are running with the culling, with... Uh, Yashiro getting a tiny bit closer to cash it in. Um, both of them are looking pretty much the same when it comes to the CS department, so we don't really see a lot of that action, but we do see the saplings, right? And that's something that allows Wolves to have a little bit more control over the lane. And let's mm -hmm. see if Addy will try to make a move here, because, again, those saplings are in that upper bush, which makes it a bit harder to walk into the lane. It makes things really damn hard for him to have anything going on the bot lane because, yes, that's Mark. It's, you know, you remember back in the days when Ashheim and Dinger were all the talk? Because yeah. of how much they were pushing the lane, because of how much control they had over the bushes as well, thanks to Heimerding his turrets. Oh, yeah, that's actually true. The same that's, here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much the same kind of story. Look at this. Look at this baby. He's like, Wee! And you run away from him, rightfully so, because you don't want this thing to do a wee at you. It hurts. Um, honestly speaking, I don't want anybody to do a wee at me because that's uh, <laughs> a tiny bit Fair inappropriate. Enough. In the meantime, Grand Engine's coming in through onto Yashiro. Quite a bit of damage has landed on top of him, but the knockoff from Ellie would make sure that Mini Magic needs to retreat. The amount of damage that an early game Maokai can have with his Q, and you can he see he's maxing his Q, so that means that mm -hmm. he will have even more damage together with some additional. Uh, additional CC allows them to almost kill Mini Magic in the process, but AB use that and they start the dragon. Problem is Yonitz is here, so it can result into a double kill. Flash the flash forward with and together with an ignite. They don't even need Yonitz. Elliewood scores the first block for his AD carry just like that. Yonitz might be looking to steal the dragon. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Oh! And it is now no on the run into the bushes. Zeti is on the chase. They will not be able to catch up with that Viego, but they are damn sure to begin the game with a loud bang. Have the puppies woken up? Or maybe not... Nah, it has it too, it's fine. But that is something from them. That is Wolves denying AB absolutely everything. Beautiful move here from Elliewood on the bot lane. He's really low on mana and his abilities cost a lot. You can see just two abilities and he's completely out of mana. But that was more than enough for him to secure the first bot for Yashiro. And Aphelios loves having the first bot. Going back to the lane with more items. Getting faster to his items compared to Zeri. That's everything he could have asked for. What also is really great for that pickup of Maokai, it's not just the control that it provides that, that damage, right? And the fact that it was picked against Rakan, who doesn't exactly possess a lot of tankiness in that early. He's not a Leona who can just press his W and then see how the damage is not... Basically, he's not being delivered. Yeah, the damage is not damaging, brain's not braining, sleep not sleeping, you know, that type of thing. That just allows them to try and burst him down as much as possible. We always see an answer that is a question, because right now, AB lost the first blood, lost the first dragon, which is the ocean dragon, which allows Wolves to feel just a tiny bit more comfortable in that laning phase, and we need to see a little bit of more of that proactiveness from AB if they want to make sure that the bot lane of Wolves don't spin out of control. 
So far, nothing really spins out of control. It's just 1-0 out on Great for Wolves. The Herald is going to be up soon, so that's going to be a shoot for them. Will they manage to secure it, this Herald? Because if AB get it, all the gold lead for Wolves might just be completely neglected by this one objective. Definitely true. Let's see if they will be able to secure it. Top plane in the meantime. A little bit of push coming towards Matix, but pretty much both of them are standing in the same place. Yonisus and ZTY are trying to make sure that the control over the mid lane is not falling into the hands of AB. And now it looks quite splendidly for them. Also tries to secure the, the crab. Addy has the smite, but Yonisus has one as well. And for now, he is winning that smite war. And looks like he's even starting the... No, he doesn't start the bar uh, not the Baron the Herald yet. No, but he's around, and Addy's around, and that's a lot of attention from the Wolves to this whole part of the map. However, there is still Maddox on the top lane, and while Maddox has been paying a lot of respect to his hero because he is not really having fights with him, knowing that he might easily lose those. If he rotates to the Herald, if IAB decides to go aggressive on the Herald, this is going to be a tough fight for Wolves. But he's not so far because Hishira was in control of the lane because he keeps the lane in the state closer to the enemy turret, forcing Maddox to stay in there. AB cannot find an answer. So the Herald by Hishiro. Adi? Might be in a bit of trouble. The stone coming in through, but he managed to pretty much dash out before that stun have hit him. He is in the safety zone, and I don't think that anything has been invested now by neither of the teams. And neither of the players. But the Herald, in the meantime, has fallen into the hands of Yonitsus. And that's good. That's really good for Wolves. Because they are still having the gold lead. And they will maintain and even increase the gold lead if the Herald is used correctly. And that is a good start of the game for them. They don't really have that many early game tools. They don't have any lane bully like Ali Banka, for example, on their hands. Maddox will find himself in a tough spot in the late game if he doesn't get any lead before that. But he's trying to. Ghost. Might be in a bit of trouble. Ragnarok has been pressed and the Ragnarok has been called. The flash coming in through as well. Another Q's gonna hit. He's trying to make a difference, but he can't because he's CC immune. Matic solo kills him. In the meantime, Zetui might be in trouble. Flashes out instantly as Addy catches up, but he can't do anything. Elliewood is here as well to help him out. Might be looking for a turn here. Ellie is in the bushes. Looking for something at the very least. Gonna get spotted in the ward. Flashes forward. Tries to go for it. The knockup has happened. The Vanguard's edge as well. Brilliant work from Eliwood. The ring bearer delivering the fight to the hands of the Fellowship of the Ring as they pick up second one in the game. And will still maintain the control and the lead despite what happened on the top lane. I find it rather interesting what exactly happened on the top lane. I hope we see the replay of that because Hijira was trying to run away from Maddox. He was not even trying to have a fight with him because when Olaf is in Ragnarok, he's CC immune and, all, and um, Owen relies a lot on his CC when he's fighting with the enemy up close. He wanted to drag the time to drag out the Ragnarok of Maddox and ideally also just run away from him, flash under the throat where he would have an advantage. But it didn't happen because Maddox just burst him down. And I was talking about the respect that we saw from him before this point on the top lane. It is gone. Maddox knows that he is strong right now, has the Vampiric Scepter, has the items. He just needs to wait for another Ragnarok and he might go on to Hijiro again. The dragon in the meantime has been started as a can take Drakes and don't really have to fight for it, but Yonitz just presses forward. Elliewood is here onto Minimagic now as the lightning clash has been pressed. He's now though chipped away and even forced away as well. Elliewood is alone and he gives away the reset. Addy can continue now Yon onto Yonitz, but Yonitz flashes over the wall. Here comes the core, the Forge God, onto at least yeah, one. The knockup is there, gets him down as Zeti White now chases down Manny, gets away and hops out on these soldiers, but it will punish AP for taking the dragon. And another great move from Wolves because it did look dire for, for them right here on Minimatric is dancing around Yonatis. There is a lot of damage on him and Ali Wood finds himself so far away from the teammates that the Moonlight Vigil cannot hit anybody and he dies. And here is the moment when you start getting bored for Yashiro because Yonatis flashes out. Yashiro has the flash. He decides not to use it because he knows one thing and one thing only is that he was born to deal damage to the enemies and he does exactly that. And it's surprisingly a lot of damage considering he has no items completed. We have a whole different story than what we've seen in game number one. Now it's Wolves who are in full control. Yashiro 2000 gold over his adversary in the bot lane. 
the rest of the of the map is also going relatively into the favor of wolves but they need to continue to maintain that lead if they want to keep going like that with the fights like this however you can't really imagine that they will be able to fall behind let's see what else they can do the Harold has been dropped uh in the bot lane i believe yeah 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 oh ellie wood oh ellie wood. to Svens right now Oh, there's no one to help him out, though. But look at the damage already. He's just flexing. He chipped away, what? 20% of his HP? Mm -hmm. Nice, Jesus flexing Christ. his three muscles, his wooden muscles. And he is feeling really confident about those. And now Yashiro is back to the lane. Yashiro has the Kraken Slayer already completed. Yashiro Ooh. is in a good spot. He's ahead of Sven's 1.1k. It might be changed, though, because look at the amount of people from LA Bank team. This time, new saplings are in the bushes, so... Wolves don't know. You sure it has a feeling here, so that something Yonatus. is wrong? Oh, Jonas just walks up, and now he might get stuck in here. Ellie Wood on to Minimagic. The teleport coming in through as well. Svens is trying to fire away. Minimagic is in trouble, but the shadow is coming in through. And that's the reset. His Jure now arrives onto the teleport, but he can't really do anything. As the call of the Forge Gordon in five seconds. So if they want to try and turn it underneath the turret, they can. But can they really? Against Adi, against Minimagic, they're forcing him even more underneath the turret. Jonas and his Jure continue to press on. Adi runs away for his life. And they give away the first turret. It falls into the hands of Wars. In the meantime, ZTY actually teleports in to make sure that Matix doesn't continue to push. So, the replay here, the moment the teleport is in, you realize that this is not looking good for Wolves whatsoever. Especially because Yashiro finds himself in a very bad spot. Aphelios doesn't want, like, he wants the enemies to go into him, but he doesn't actually want them to reach him. Especially if it's something like Viego. And Viego kills him, Viego gets a good uh, reset for himself. But after that, Wolves get the turret in the bot lane, and they protect their turret on the top lane. So even though they lost their AD carry in the process, it's not like they lost too much. And they're still having a 3k gold lead for the team. So, it's not bad. It's a little slip in there. Unfortunate one, because no vision in the bushes was a costly mistake, but not too bad. They've lost about a 700 gold lead for Yashiro, as he was slowed down a little bit. But I believe he should be able to catch up rather quickly. I'm also just now noticing that there's 1000 gold difference between the supports, and Elliewood is going 214 already in this game. 100% participation. Yeah, support, by the way. Doesn't exactly look like one. Heron had been started in the meantime. As, uh... Addy? Maybe looking for a play here. Together with Manny, perhaps, who's already in the... In the river, but instead, no. They turn their attention to try to stop the minions and get into the enemy's jungle. Herod has been picked up. Does that see why? Looking for a fight. Oh, Vanguard has been used. The stun coming in through. Not really a lot just yet. Minimagic has been slowed down, trying to charm him up and knock him up in the air as well with the Hearts Breaker. Two on one, and it works. Sadie picks up the kill with the help of Minimagic. Yeah, I mean, Imagic was the deciding factor in this one. Z2I did not expect the enemy support to be in there. And there is very limited vision available to the wolves in their own jungle. There is quite a lot from Alia Bank right now. They've got a lot of offensive walls. Good for them. They see the enemies if they decide to approach the dragon right now. But the enemies are not approaching the dragon from there because they're on the mid lane. They have the herald popped in there. And now they can look into a possibility to rotate towards the drake or even leave it alone and cut through this turret. The turret will take a loud punch. With that herald, maybe they're continuing. Yes, they are looking to push it even further. Yes, Ooh, the dragon nice. is being taken, but they don't exactly need it. They don't exactly need to fight for it. It's not the most beneficial thing in the world, as they have almost brought down the turret. Elliewood might be in trouble, as they're all up now pushing in through. Has his CC immune, so he can't really do anything. It's a trade of kills. Minimagic is the next on the line as he's is trying to tank it. Is she firing away? Yonatus goes golden. The Moonlight video is going to get dropped down with a little bit of damage. Minimagic is yet to be killed as Sven fires away. Nobody is going and die after the exchange of these two kills as the bodies just lying there parallel to one another but what an intenseful fight at the ultimate there from ellie was
a little bit desperate onto Maddox because Maddox did not care about it whatsoever, but at least slow down everybody else. And the main idea of Alibut from here now on is going to be throwing in the ultimate to make sure that Yashiro can always relocate safely should the enemies get too close to him. And Yashiro was almost untouched in this fight, was able to fly away freely, and that is the main idea for Wolves right now. Everybody else can dance around, do whatever they want with the enemies. Yashiro just needs to stay the hell away from them and fight from as safe distance as is available to Ophelia. So it's not looking too bad still for Bulls. I love for Alibank that they're finding their kills back and they're fighting the kills on important people, on Maddox, on Adi, because these champions are going to be the carry. We're not so sure about Zeri. Probably when we get to the late game, Zeri is still going to hit like a truck, but right now Svens is not anywhere close, so Adi and Maddox have to be the main heroes of this story. It's a question, can they? Adi only now starts to accelerate himself a tiny bit more. Still 600 gold behind over his adversary. When it comes to Matix, however, he's, he's feeling rather comfortable. 2,000 gold ahead over his opponent in the bot lane. Already has the Ravenous Hydra. Continues to build himself up. Continues to split push as well, forcing his year now to go and answer him. And it's my question, what wolves are looking to do? Because they need to at least try to push him through the top lane. Now, by the looks of it, that's exactly what they're looking to do. Forcing money out, giving space to ZTY to at least bring down the first turret, but AB answer it with the turret in the mid lane almost instantly. Well, they have to answer it with turret in the mid lane because look at their state of their own mid lane. It is uh, non-existent pretty much. So they absolutely have to take this turret on the mid lane right now or Not else. as well. Onto Adi. Adi knocked up in the air. Already killed oh, there as well. Manning teleports yo. himself in. in the meantime. He's Euro versus Cine Magic. Mini Magic has to run away. Ground onto Grand Entrance. Here comes the knock up from the Call of the Forge God. And whether you are in Ragnarok or not, it is time for you to go into Valhalla. As Hijiro picking up that kill, Wolf found themselves the great turnaround, and now they're looking to push, but not through the top lane, but through mid lane rather. Man, they have really woken up. I don't know what was happening with Wolves in the previous game, but this time it is finally the team that we remember and that we love. Look at how much they've done here. Not only did they take two kills in that fight, they protected their turret on the mid lane, completely turned it around against the enemy and took the inner turret on the mid lane, which means their access to the dragons in the barons is going to be so much easier, especially if they open the top lane. I believe it is open already there. How many turrets? There? Yeah, the turret on the top lane is gone. So it is really perfect for wolves right now. In a minute and 40, that's going to be the next streak. Take it if you're wolves right now because you need to deny the soul point for Alibang still. And then keep the vision on the burn, and when the moment arises, go and take it. For now, it seems like it seems to be as easy as it gets. Let's see if AB has an answer to it. They are falling about four thousand gold, falling behind. Not feeling particularly good when it comes to map control either. Yes, they have found themselves a few quite good macro decisions, but they were almost instantly shut down by the sheer power that wolves do have in their hands. You've just seen what Eliwood and Yashiro can do alone against three members of the enemy team. Well, with a little bit of help of, of the turret, that's true. Yeah. No. And now it's on to uh, AB yeah. to find a way how to conduct these team fights if they want to win. Now, the thing is, if you look at Yonati's inventory, he's getting to his hat as the second item. And that is a bold statement from the guy immediate burst to his AP power. He's going to be a big thing for Aliabank to cut through because he is right now the sheer carrier of the AP power for the Sada Wolves. And he's going to bring a lot. We're at 20 first minutes in the game. This is where Rumble feels very good in the game. And everybody else feels good too. A nice protective item on his Shiro. Two items on the Phileas. These guys want to fight. The roots are coming down and it's time for AB to try maybe and retreat a little. AB has been rooted quite a bit. Moonlight Vigil onto Manny as he's getting chipped away with the sniping Whoa. rifle too. Manny has to retreat. The fight has ended even before it has started. As Wolves manage to chip away the enemies, make sure that they can't do anything and then go and bring down the dragon very quickly. And I really love what they're doing next. So look at that. AB have tried to rotate towards the Baron. But they realize they cannot do it, not just because they don't have the damage, but because Eliwood was there to make sure that nobody goes mm -hmm. through him. 
Yes, Elliewood is doing so damn great in this game. I'm really happy with the Malachi pickup for him. And Wolves have to be happy with it too. They also need to, have to be happy with the guns rotation for you, sure, because those were some really good guns to provide a lot of long-range poke for Ali Bang team. And for Aphelios, it is hard to get long-range onto the enemies, but this combination was there and it was perfect. He is an item, a full item ahead of Zero right now. Poor Svens is still sitting only on static ship. It's 20 second minutes in the game. He should recall soon though and get the second item finally but it is still Zeri that is feeling really behind and it's not looking good for Aliabang compared it to the previous game this time it's Aliabang who need to find an answer to Wolves who need to play under constant pressure and they are not handling that pressure far too well as of yet we haven't seen a great shuffle we haven't seen Avia and Matix just run towards the enemies and kill them right on the spot and we want to see that if AB are looking to try to pick up the win for themselves for now though Wolves are controlling everything they brought down the dragon they have managed to conduct the team fight exactly in a way that they wanted yes they haven't killed anyone but they forced AB out of the, of the mid lane just in a blink of an eye and the next target might as well be the Baron they have the damage and the means mm -hmm. to kill that Baron right on the spot it's the it's basically a question of advantage and at least of some pressure. The stun is not coming in through. Ellie would shift away just a tiny bit, but it's not enough to start a fight. But now Yorantis is coming back with a nice new shiny hat on his head, and that is the moment when Wolves can try to tr to go look for opportunities to pick up a fight with Ali Bank because that's a lot of damage that Yorantis is bringing to the table. Let's see if they will manage to, because yes, the Baron is looking like something Wolves would love to get, because they will be able to cut through it. They have Yoshiro, they have uh, Yorantis, both of them have a lot of power to go through the major objectives. Doesn't really look like they're looking to do it right now though, because look at that, Yashiro doesn't have the perfect guns to do it, so they will not be able to cut them through. Maybe they're looking for a fight though, because for a fight, they do have pretty good guns. They have the rooting one, which will allow maybe to drop down, uh, drop down an equalizer, and still do some damage, plus the AoE gun, the blue one, which also will do quite a bit of damage. Let's see what are they looking to do here. For now, those are TY is a little bit separated from his team, doesn't really seem to be in trouble though. Elliewood chipped away just a tiny bit and AB just continued to dance here because they know that if they give worth them time and space, they Elliewood? might be in trouble. The knockup is there here. No, Elliewood comes a little bit way too far. That's a kill. In the meantime, Aphelia scores again to Viego and now both of the teams are retreating. It's been a, a little bit of an overstep from the support of Wolves. They are looking to start the Baron. Why? Because the jungler is dead. They have 30 seconds to do so. But can AB find an answer? There's no Ragnarok. There's still Shuffle though. Knock up onto ZTI. Vanga's Edge has been dropped down but there's nothing you can really do about it. The Shuffle is not really in the right direction though. But it allows them to have just a tiny bit more time to force Wolves out. AB are standing strong. They stopped the Baron, and that is all that matters right now from Wolves. It was a risky move. They just killed the enemy jungle. They also lost one in the process. They decided they had the means to go onto the Baron immediately, but they didn't have the damage to cut through it as quickly as they would like to. While the enemy still has the damage, they can still fight back. They can stop the Baron from happening. So Wolves made a mistake there, a little slip. They still, however, exchange skills one for one, so it's still not looking too bad for them somehow. And to be honest, I'm feeling bad for money in this game, because this is not where Azir wants to be, and this is not how Azir wants to be playing. He doesn't have anybody going on to him. The only one from the side of Wolves who is engaging on the enemies is Aliwood. Everybody else is just waiting for Alibank to go on to them. Aliobank are the ones trying to go in and find an opening onto Wolves, and that's not how Azir wants the game to be played. He wants the enemies to go into him, and nobody's paying attention to the poor Emperor. He's just a little sad, lonely bird. A lot of that falls onto Pinimagic right now, who might be in a bit of trouble. Knocks up ZTY in the air. Equalizer from Yornatus is not going to find a single target. And it's just I wanted to speak about Minimagic, he found himself in a bit of trouble, but he manages to get out of it. We really need to see more engages from Minimagic. We need to see more of that footwork that we love Rakan for from Minimagic. But we don't really see it just as yet. Ellie Wood now being forced away. Yonatus might be in trouble. Here comes the shuffle from Manny as they force themselves onto Yonatus and they kill him right on the spot. And that might be exactly the moment when he can steal away that Baron as they started. The dragon had been stolen. That is 
the sword point for them. The Baron is falling down 8,000, 7,000 each speed. Warsaw here, maybe to try and do something about it. Zetia is here, so is Eliwood. And we're looking in to go as the Baron already has been slain. Wolves are way too late for the party. And the AB are running with a present for themselves. That's not good look for Wolves. Just when we were praising them. That sleep on the Baron, the previous one, actually cost them a little bit too much. And then they slept again. They allowed Aliabank to take Yonakis down because they had no vision around the Baron anymore and they weren't cautious enough on going and trying to re-establish it back onto the Summoner's Reef. And look at where it got them. They are still 11-8. They are still slightly leading in terms of cool, but Aliabank are easily going to take it back right now because they have an excellent split pusher. Maddox is still sitting on the sidelines non-stop. They can go in all together and they have nice fighting power right now with two items on money, two items on, well, everybody except for the support. That is a good support for Alia Bank. Can we we'll say the same about themselves? Zero might be in a bit of trouble. Matrix continues to push through with a little bit of more that acts work. I Minimagic mean, is here to try to help out Flash away, but it's not going to help whatsoever. It goes Golden to try and drag more time. Win that time! The Call of the Forge God is not going to find anyone. Addy goes into the Orn's body and tries to do at least something. The Rook coming in through and the Heartbreaker is not going to get him out. Minimagic with the quickness, with the ground entrance, gets out as quickly as he can possibly do it. And as the trade of kills, a BR forced out from here. Ellie Woods tries to go down and go back to the mid lane as soon as he can. But they are too little, too late, as the mid lane turret has been forced, broken and destroyed. AB now pushed through bot lane, also hit to answer it, but again, they will not be, be able to do anything against the quickness of the Baron buff. And the gold lead is back into the hands of AB. Look at that, they are leading things to the Baron buff. It is almost equal but they are in a such better sport right now compared to when they were pre this baron wolves still are making all the exchanges one one they are still keeping the game in that sense equal for them but that was not a good look for them again because hijiro again refuses completely to fight with maddox the moment this olaf goes into ragnarok and starts jumping running onto olaf Again, it is understandable because not a few control is going to work on him and it's only one to throw control at the enemy but just running away from him looks a little bit sad. The thing about gold is that it's a little bit deceiving. Yes, it looks equal when it goes to total gold, but if you look at the individual gold, you can see that the majority of gold as it is on the side of AB is held in the hands of Matrix, and he is definitely one of the biggest menaces. When it comes to other sides, or any other basically lane, the gold still is in the favor of wolves. Maybe it's not that much and you would like to see much more on minute 30, but that's at least a component of an item that you are still having that edge over your enemy. For now, <laughs> if AB continue to go like that, they will be able to pick up the pace and get themselves onto the same page with the rest of the enemy team. But Matix continues to grow as the biggest problem for Houston, who has a problem, in the face of wolves here because he is split pushing 24 7 he's always on the side lanes on top of that there is money who is also helping out with the other lanes how do wolves stop him they keep rotating hijira onto maddox but we already saw two times what happens if maddox decides hey i'm tired of that i'm just going to go for a kill confirmed wolves have a massive split push problem right now and that's not what they want to deal with they want to be fighting they have hijira on three and a half items they're almost at ldr for him as a fourth one they need to unleash the sheer AD power that these affiliates has right now. But they can't, because Aliabank are not giving them the fight that Wolves desperately want. They are split pushing, they are taking in the gold, they are taking their time to collect more items. Macro decisions in this game from AB is exactly what keeps them alive still. But now, you can avoid the fight for as long as you want, but you will have to fight for Dragon. It comes up in 35 seconds. Wolves are on the soul point, and if you give that soul away, that will allow wolves to tank even more. And maybe that will allow them to tank Matics just a tiny bit more effective than they do right now. You want to try to fight for it, but it's only 20 seconds, and you need to understand how do you want to approach it. That's a good question. However, I oh, 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 who is approaching who? And to Eliwood right now, the Heartbreaker has been used as well. A lot of damage coming down to him, but now the rest of the team is joining him. Flashes are getting burned. Minimagic is here. Doesn't find Yashiro. As the Moonlight Vigil is going to go absolutely wild. 
And Ellie would, was forced to flash over the wall to get himself into safety. A lot of resources have already been burnt, but nobody has died just yet. Ellie would continues to relentlessly push through, goes on to Minimagic, roots him down, tries to go for more. The knockup is there to force him out of this fight. Addy, long way around, but he joins into the fray as they are looking to push down this dragon. 4,000 HP, 3,000 HP. Here comes the Call of the Forge God. On to Manny. Manny flashes out instantly. The dragon has been taken down. The shuffle onto ZTY. Yonis is already there. His hero tries to get into safety, but he can't really do it as ZTY is burning away. And Elliewood is the last trans standing as he will be killed as well. Yashiro running towards the base. Again, he is the only one to look as his teammates are crumbling down. AB! Take away the dragon, take away the fight, and might even take away the game. And that's a lesson about the overconfidence for your boys and girls that you've had when watching this one. Wolves being so in the lead in this game, so in control, decided to throw everything away with just a couple of mistakes, and Aliabank were quick enough to pick up the pace and kill Yashiro on the spot. That's a shutdown, that's a kill for Svens, but doesn't even matter. 12 14, only the slightest difference between the teams, but all that mattered was some really good decisions from Aliabank team, and in general, AB being much better with decision making compared to the enemy and them dragging the time until finally poor Azir gets the items and gets the enemies going into them because the enemies don't even know what else to do anymore. Macro decision is what led Aliabank team into complete sustain in, in, in pretty much in the majority of that game when they couldn't do anything and then exactly at the moment when they could turn this around they did it. Right now, what we saw is that Wolves do have the potential to fight, fight really well, but they don't have the potential to outplay Aliobank team when it comes to other fields. Will they do that in game number three? We do not know. Right now, it's match point. Just a bit more and Aliobank will win. Will they? We'll see right after the break. Position. Stay true to your lane and join Kia at the League of Legends Emir Championship. Kia, movement that inspires. Something to say. 
Was broke, now I got expensive taste When I was way down, I always kept the faith Out of breath, how I'm running to the bank When you winning, they gon' have something to say Was broke, now I got expensive taste When I was way down, I always kept the faith Kept the faith To the bank. When you winning, they gon' have something to say. Was broke, now I got expensive taste. When I was way down, I always kept the faith.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for game number three. The most decisive game right now for Iron Wolves that ever was in this series and in this split. Two games we saw Iron Wolves struggling to actually step up to Alia Banks' level because we haven't seen them able to get their macro decisions correctly and we haven't seen them to be able to pull their leads to the point where things are just going exactly their way while for ab it just works splendidly really and that raises the question should all of us who are rooting for wolves be worried right now because it is starting to look like a 3-0 angle for all your team wolves don't really have much time to work on their mistakes right now they already made too many over the course of these two games and it is especially heartbreaking in the second game because they were leading they got really nice first but for Ishiro, they were playing around Ishiro greatly Ellie Wood did absolutely gorgeous on the Merakai support in this game but then they make a couple of small mistakes and they don't seem really too big on the ground scheme of things but it is more than enough for Alia Bank to take control back into their hands and completely skyrocket from their own. Wolves need to play flawlessly in their next game if they want to win it and maybe start the beautiful story for reverse sweep but I'm looking at Alia Bank and they are feeling so damn strong right now even though they also make their own mistakes but those are really minor compared to Wolves and overall everybody's playing great Maddox absolutely insane Adi finding really good angles everybody else doing exactly what they need to do and Maddox when he finally gets to his back lane is unstoppable the interesting thing is when you look at every single team fight, it just looks like Wolves are completely in control. Even look at this one. Instantly, they just annihilate Addy out of the rift. Continue to push forward. Get down Matrix. It just looks better and better and better and better, really, for them. But when it comes to those macro decisions, when it comes to the way how to spin this around after you actually got that lead, that's when trouble actually comes in into the mm -hmm. in um, into the into the play. Yeah. And I really don't trouble know what will, what will need to change in order to do something about it. Um, I think it is about the approach to the game. Do not be overzealous. Do not be overconfident because overconfidence is what killed them initially at the Baron pit. And then it allowed Alibank to get the lead, to get the time and the lead that they desperately needed. There are many things that Wolves can try right now, but again, they only have one game left for them right now if they lose this one. And we are collectively worried for them, because as much as we love Alia Bank, especially throughout this season, as much as they feel really good and strong and really good playoff material, again, compared to the previous split, for example, Wolves getting out in this fashion is going to be pretty heartbreaking. It will be, definitely. And the thing is, we know that they can show us the level of gameplay that will allow them to pretty much move forward when it comes to the uh, to the playoffs but it's the question where they whether they will be able or not now they chose a red side for themselves uh which provokes a, a few more questions from me because what we've seen from them in the previous draft was um surprising to say the least but kind of fun and yeah. you could argue that it sort of worked kind of sort of depends almost on your point of view and i'm really wondering what they're gonna pull out in this game because okay team fighting works for you well that's great now you also don't you, you don't need just team fighting you need something that will allow you to have constant control of the map if you want to continue in this in this playoffs and in the series really I strongly believe that draft wasn't the problem for Wolves in the previous game. The draft was pretty well-rounded and you can see just how much they were denying money, for example, his play potential up until the very last stages of the game. I think it's just about the approach to the games that Wolves take. But they're re-approaching draft as well because the first ban is going to be that Azur taken away from money. Is it going to be the thing that is going to allow Wolves to finally get control over the Bank team? I don't know. Let's see. No idea, really. A lot of bans are now going towards Manny, while AB are doing pretty much exactly the same thing. They take away LeBlanc and Tristana from ZTY. Mm -hmm. My question is what's going to be the first pickup for them, because Zaya is now banned away. Wolves can Kaiser. ban out Kaiser. 
or they can not ban it out as well because they haven't done it in game number one. They will do it now. Hmm. Hmm. What do you pick? Oh, you pick nothing apparently. Hi, Bezzy. <laughs> but you can you can pick quite many things. Uh, Rail, Maokai. Just thinking of you know the most prominent first picks right now would maybe Sejuani. But they go with Rail. Very flex pick. Lovely to see her even despite the recent nerves. What do you answer with as Wolves? You can either try to lock in the bot lane duo. Rakan for Elliewood sounds like very fair option based on the performances that we've seen. But it's not there just yet. No, okay. Rakan locked in. Fair enough. Now let's see what else is going to be locked in there too. They can... I mean, there's quite a bit of AD carries that is left for the taking. Yes, Xai is not available, but you can pick up Ezreal. You can pick up Aphelios again because it worked rather nicely. Okay, instead you go for Rumble. You answer with your own flex. You have to use the fact that you're on the red side right now as Wolves. You cannot really open the cards because they already opened their cards in the first game and that left them being pretty much snowballed over by Alia Bank. So they're starting with the support and a jungler slash top lane depending on the situation, even though most probably it's going to be again the rumble for Yonatis. And I'm Ari for money. I love it. Another of his comfort pick finally in his hands. We have seen him play these two champions, Azir and Ari, quite a lot in the previous seasons. So that pickup is pretty much one of the... Okay! Ooh. You know what's so, cool? Hey, Jira looked at Marix in the previous game and he was like, Hey, I can do that too. Or maybe it's Zeti. Maybe it's Zeti Y. Exactly. And based on the fact that I see a ghost, I am willing to make a bet that this is going to be Zeti Y. Disgusting. Which makes a lot of sense to me because that will be a great champion for ZTY as it is. But you need to well, you will have to cook it very carefully if you want to do if you want to execute it to the fullest. The thing about Trindamir is that he he makes mid lane unplayable for like the majority of the mid laners that we have right now with very, very few exceptions. He is a powerhouse in the laning phase. He will bully you the hell out of the lane. And he has an AP jungler to add on top of him. So if they want to completely remove money from the game, they totally can do so. And now they have so many possibilities as to what else they want to pick for themselves. Because unfortunately, Aphelios has been the last ban from Alibang, so he sure has his pool limited. But okay. oh my God, they're adding more powerhouses. That, that's Aatrox for them yesterday. We had Aatrox games and they absolutely did not work out for Illumina Gaming. Maybe today it's going to be different for Wolves. We've seen his Hijiro to play a lot on Aatrox. We know that is one of his comfort champions. So I'm rather curious to see how exactly we're going to go. Now we know that there's going to be a lot of fighting because Olaf has now been locked in for Matic. So I imagine that these two are going to punch themselves out to the orbit. To the yeah. orbit anonymous. Ha, huh? sorry. <laughs> Uh, Zeri now almost locked in for sense. Okay, it is locked in. So now we only have the AD carry. What do you lock in right now? There's not that many options left. Israel. Israel oh, for okay. Israel. Yeah. And AD carry with a lot of mobility because right now both of the teams, except for Zeri, want to be all in and into the enemies. With Mani with a slight exception here because also Ari can choose how she wants to approach the fight. Does she want outflank? Does she want to go all in? But the idea is everybody can all in. And if you look across the map, it works for absolutely everybody. Because for Wolves, it's the same. They want to be forcing the fights with the enemy and they want to be going on to them. That is going to be... Up, I mean, that's going to be really explosive. I love the pickup of Ezreal a lot for Ishiro because this mobility will allow him to stay alive and get away from things like Maddox and Adi. But I am looking at Minimatric. And I know that we have so many carries in this game throughout, like in both teams. But my eyes will be on Minimatric because with that frail, that magnet storm against the enemies, it is going to be absolutely massive if used correctly, both defensively and offensively. We'll have to see how Minimatric exactly will approach uh, the the way he's gonna he, he's gonna actually drop them down. However, is this lane gonna be easy? Definitely not, especially with the fact that Ezreal will be poking and will be poking quite a mm -hmm. lot, which is something you will have to just you know try to settle with. Uh, 
And also there's going to be Rakan, who will be a little bit of a, how to put it, annoyance in one uh, unnamed places, if you'd like to. So we'll have to see how this bot lane matchup overall is going to look like. Interestingly enough, I feel like the drop from Wolves is... I don't want to say the same because it's just not the same in particular, but it's rather really similar and same in its score as we've seen in game number two. Okay. We've seen how game number two have went though. So now my question is, okay, you know how to team fight really good. Can you team fight really good with that team comp? Yes, you can. But you need to show us that you can also control the map. And I am wondering, yeah. can they do this? Because AB have all the tools necessary to make sure that just nothing spins out of their control. Interestingly enough, compared to previous three games, we don't really have any hard scalers this time. We have champions who, if they catch lead, are going to go absolutely massive. You look at the top lane, that is the case there. You look at the main lane, that is the case there, definitely. But the majority of these champions want to be active either in the early game or in the early and mid game. Except for Zeri, but I, I I don't know. I just don't feel like Zeri is as uh, big of a threat as she used to be pre-nurse before. So Zeri not but, Zeri. Yeah, Zeri is kind of not Zeri these days, unfortunately. She still is going to deal damage and it's going to be super annoying, but the fight is not going to be about her. The fights are going to be about everybody else. If, the top lane to me is going to be probably one of the most interesting lanes because while I want to be looking at mid lane and I need to see how Manny is going to stand under the immense pressure that Trindamir will put on the lane, it is honestly probably, for me personally, Trindamir is the worst thing to ever play against. It, regardless of who I'm playing as. But on the top lane, whoever gets the lead on the top lane is going to absolutely snowball because the moment level 6 hits, both of these guys will try to go onto each other and try to go for a kill confirmed. If Maddox does it, he is controlling the lane. But if his Jiro gets the lead, Maddox is never coming back. That looks like a bit of a spicy matchup. As ladies and gentlemen, I am welcoming you on the Summoner's Rift. The current score is 2-0. Alia Bank team have managed to steal the victory away from the Wolves' hands, or Wolves' paws, if you like, in the previous game in utmost brilliant fashion. Can they do it again, or can they completely dominate the Rift? I do not know. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea, and I'm yeah. really open to be surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm open to any outcome of this game. By the way, apparently the GDG buff, let's call it this way, is working for Alia Bank because they are stomping. Um, but let's get back to the importance of this game because this is the game point for Alia Bank. And whoever wins the game today is going to be playing against Motorani Forsaken next week. But whoever loses it is ending their playoff run right here, right now. Wolves are one game away from starting a nice little vacation. Alia Bank. They want to take this game, they want to stomp, they want to go further. Will they? Let's see, let's find out, as they say, quite soon, because the game is starting and everybody's looking for some extreme aggression, including Adi, who's just sitting in the enemy jungle like it's his own. Oh, They open oh. it up very aggressively, with um, top lane jungle already being taken in absolute control by Adi. He will be able to spin himself into level two instantly pick up some nice gold if he comes there too i wonder if yonitus is gonna answer that with going into the enemy's jungle too is that your eye having just a bit of trouble addy is already here to force him out <laughs> but the spin around the whirlwind of sorts is going to deliver the ty over mm -hmm. the wall and get him to safety very clever pathing from addy right now so he clears out the top jungle, recognizes that Yonatus might go there to try to mirror it. And what he does is he sprints across the mid lane, gets into his bottom jungle in order to clear it out, and then go mm -hmm. up to, the, to his own jungle. This is incredible pathing from Addy. 
It is going to slow down Yarnagus massively because he is going into his top jungle right now. He will only find the crux there. He will not find absolutely anything else. And he's going to be spotted on the ward if he gets into the red buff pit. After that, the only choice that's going to be left for him is to go towards the Skull Crab and then try to go vertically jungling. But he has to understand that he is going to meet Ari there most probably. This is setting him down. This is slowing him down. This is disturbing his pathing quite a lot. Yeah, well, the problem is Addy's already there. He's already clearing it out. Wolves are out. Now he can go towards the scuttle and clear the scuttle. Leaving Yonitz with no thing, nothing actually to catch there. He can try mm -hmm. to sort of invade Addy into his own jungle. Theoretically doing something there. But now the only thing he can actually claim on the map is the opposite scuttle crab. Plus, uh, the crooks that is in the bottom camp, uh, in the bottom side of the jungle of Addy, sorry. This is not, not looking good. He's waiting in the bush. He might be just waiting for the raptors to respawn, but I'm thinking, is he maybe waiting for Addy there? Like, Yana just has to understand that his jungle has been completely wiped out for him. Was he waiting for Addy to go there? But probably it's just... The raptors and now he's going back to his bottom part of the jungle but look at the difference between the junglers Adi is already so high sitting on level four finishing his clear right now can do whatever he wants can recall go back to the board part of the map he's going to have comes respawning there Adi is doing a great job here and he's on the top lane right now they want to go into his hero yeah by the looks of it he doesn't have the items he didn't reset yet so you could argue that it's maybe not going to be that beneficial, but still, can they land a stun? Yes, they can. A lot of damage already pouring in. Flash instantly used out. The W will not help him. A little bit more. No way. Come on, just one Q, and it won't be there. They didn't clear it. His shoe was just born as the most luckiest man alive. He lives somehow. And Maddox even got two turret shots, so he was the one close to dying at some point. That's an interesting move from Alia Bunny team, but it didn't work out because if it did, it would have been absolutely massive for both Maddox and Adi. But, well, his Hijiro is flashless, so maybe they will try again. Level 4 for Maddox, level 5 for Hijiro. If Hijiro still gets level 6 first, he is still going to maintain a massive advantage on the top lane despite not having the flash. Yeah, well, the problem is. That gave Yonatus enough time to catch up. Now he's sitting on mm -hmm. pretty much the same camps as Addy. Yes, Addy will be able to blast himself a little bit more into the lead thanks to Grom's. We'll even secure level 5, but just a bit more and Yonatus will be there too. With that failed gank, all of that effort that went there from Addy, well, not completely neglected, but heavily neglected. And look at that, now Hishiro is preparing for Adi. Now he is putting in the vision in his jungle. Now he is the one looking for Adi if he decides to go in. And he has level 6. Maddox doesn't have level 6 yet. There is an insane kill pressure from Hishiro onto Maddox right now. Because if Adi pops his ultimate, Maddox is going to find it a really hard time to answer. He just needs to get this level 6. This will regulate the balance on the top lane a little bit more in his favor. Adinel decides to pull the trigger and bring down the dragon, something that we see Aliobang doing relatively often, especially in this series, as they have done quite a few times already. It's going to be very easy for them since the bot lane started to reset. Eliwood is only now going to come back to the map, and Yonatus is nowhere to be seen because, again, he knows that he's on the back foot and he's trying to bring himself back into the game. And things are looking relatively stable now. The beginning of the game was completely in the side of Aliobank team. While now, the ba scales of forces have been pretty much evened. Onto Sven's maybe now, as both of them just exchange blows. But it doesn't really seem that anybody is looking to start a fight, at least not yet. Maybe on the top lane. Look at the junglers. They're coming. But both of them are going to be on the top lane right now. Yeah, indeed. Automatics now, but the chains will not bring him into close proximity. Yonatus has level 6, Addy doesn't. Keep your... Mm. 
Okay, keep your eyes on that. He is setting up his overheating. Addy is probably waiting for his level 6, but no, they just had to pull the trigger a bit a bit before that. Equal as a drop down exactly on both of them. He's here already dead, however. And that's the recent found there. It's a very good one. And Yonis just respects it and flashes out pretty much immediately. In the meantime, the fight is there. Magnet Storm. Don't think that anybody is going to die here. However, it was an exchange of kills in the top lane. And ZTY even came there to say hello. That is, the top lane fight was absolutely insane. And it worked out for Alibank despite all the circumstances. Because Yona just being a level ahead of Adi makes you think that this is going to be a flat that Wolves will win. Because they have more damage, they have more ultimates on their hands. But Alibank still are the ones who get the first blood. Oh my god! Some kill with just one turret blast. He is already down. Flash away from Elliewood trying to run for his life. Minimagic is on the chase, but the cavalry did not hit it. You're right go right into the hands into the loving hands of eddie one and he'll secure his second kill okay his hands are very loving those hands are ready to hug everybody who goes into them and we have the replay the top lane you're just starting strong he's not overheated but he throws in the ultimate the thing is however there is going to be a little bit too much damage on the side of Alia Blank, and they are going to claim the first blood. They still give away one, but that is the question of who gets the first blood, who gets that additional gold there. And then from Alia Blank, they're punishing Wolves for overstepping, for being overly aggressive on the board lane. And with great rotation from Adi, they claim another kill. So we have a 2 0 Adi right now. Adding the flashbacks from the first game. Wolves are not feeling rather great. Yes, there is no particular person who is an absolute lead at the moment, but it's pretty much all across the board that Alia Bank team are in their lead. Wolves really desperately need to find a way. How do they want to spin this around if they want to try their hopes for the reverse sweep? Herald is on the map, but it's already been taken by Adi. At least, but that's right now what is happening. Seems like Wolves are ready to try to answer it. His Jira is there. Drops down the ward. They see him. Together with Yonatus, they're here. Maybe looking to catch him. They will catch him with chains, but it will not get pulled. A few more shots to make sure that they take away that Herald. And they will do that. So that's at least something. That's pretty good, actually, for Wolves. They are claiming the Herald. They are going to get the gold from it. They are going to regain the prey on one of the lanes with the help of it. Because everywhere else, the things are not looking good for them. So at least securing something, especially something big like that, is going to help them tremendously. Because if you look at what's happening for Alia Bank right now, for a second before Yona just maybe decides to go in a fight, Divine Sandra for the Yego, the Everfrost for Ari. There's important items for the first levels of the game are already here for Alia Bank for the first stage of the game rather which means for wolves how are they even going to be fighting alia bank right now on the lanes well not only on the lanes but also for the dragon it's 50 seconds on the clock yes there's the chemtech dragon but we know the importance of delaying the soul so wolves mm -hmm. might be interested to try to pick, pick that one up not for the certain benefits of the chemtech not uh, of the chemtech dragon not solemnly for that, but just for the fact that you want to drag that soul out, potentially. Shiro might get Tower Dome oh, yeah, here, yeah, and he's yeah, here yeah, yeah, together yeah. with Minimagic. They're going right on top of him. You sure dancing around. It's four versus one. There's no way you survive through that. Equalizer being dropped down as well. Svens tanking the shots. As here comes the Heartbreaker. Addy is in the safety. He's Shiro and Yonatz. They cannot do anything. ZTY is not going to chase them down. Alia Bank team, get away with one very successful tower dive. Um, they're not even going to punish them. Alia Bank just come in, they take the kill, they take the turret of the top lane, they take the uh, teleport out of his Jiru, and all they get is one flash from Adi, taking away out of them. And, okay, maybe dragon, but that is not decided yet, and even if it is, it is just one single dragon. That is disgusting. Wolves are in, not in a good position in this game, unfortunately for them. And it's going to be so damn hard to bounce back or to find a plan B. Because we talked about it in the draft. Both teams are rounded around the uh, early to mid game. And for Wolves, with having so many early game trolls, are you sure you, are, you can safely wait until the late game hits? Well, frankly speaking, they are falling behind. That is definitely true. But they're not falling behind that massively we see that they're not able to answer anything and that 
they are not ready to or not capable of taking control over what is happening on, on the map, that is definitely true. However, when it comes to gold, they are not falling down and falling behind that massively. 400 is the difference in the top lane. Only 100 or 200-ish is the difference here in the bot lane. Might be more now because Elliewood, trying to dance around with his quickness, tries to go on a dance, but he can't reach his Shiro, and Addy is going to pick up that kill. Now ZTY tries to chase down Manny. Manny just to catch up with him, with lands a few blows. Ghost is now being propped. Traded for an ultimate. Manny looking to maybe push for the kill here. ZTY has the ultimate, but not going to use that because Addy is here to equalize the chances of this fight. Oh Ragnarok God. and World's End. Uh, who will it be? The Viking or the Darkin? The Viking prevails. It's a solo kill for Matix. The action is just out burning everywhere. Well. As, as I said about the top lane, whoever gets the lead is going to be stronger and is going to pretty much win the lane immediately. And that is the case for Maddox. In the fair fight on the top lane, he wins with uh, with no hesitation, with no second thoughts, with no doubts whatsoever. And he is going to continue leading through the lane. Oh, at least Jonas just now picks up a little bit of go. Equalizer has been dropped down onto Addy. Minimagic is here to pin point Ellie Wood. They will not be able to kill him, but they will be certainly able to punch him. Damage him. No kills through. Just a tiny bit more of gold claimed before the turret uh, plates have fallen. But Wolves are still falling behind. And now it's top lane again that spins out of control. Oh yes. And it's Olaf. You don't really want to see Olaf on the enemy team spinning out of control. Look at that. Everybody on the side of our uh, Alibang team are leading in terms of gold right now. You know, this is getting pretty close to them, but still Adi is firmly on the lead. Mari is sitting right below them. It is tough for Wolves right now to find their footing into this game. They need to keep farming and they need to keep collecting items. They need items for his hero because this Aatrox is still sitting without any completed item whatsoever. They absolutely need an item for ZTY and after that maybe they can try to find an up close fight with Aliabank. Ideally with a numbers advantage because so far they haven't tried to pull this off. They haven't tried to go onto AB with a numbers advantage while AB have done that quite successfully. And let's see what will happen. Another fight might just outbreak here in the bot lane. However, it seems like the only target was the blue buff. As they take it away and run, giggling happily like uh, maniacal maniacs. Whatever that's supposed to mean. One minute and 45 seconds on the clock before the Cloud Drake is going to appear. Not exactly the most beneficial of once. It is the soul of this game. But stacking them up still will be quite nice especially for champions like zeti uh, for trindamir and uh, rakan so uh, well actually atrox is going to benefit from that quite a lot too and then when you look on the other side it's actually as well minimash is going to be happy Svens is going to be happy matrix is going to be happy this actually is a pretty good soul this in this game isn't it uh-huh if you look across the map everybody will be really damn happy about this soul because we're talking about huge ultimates on both of the teams so whoever gets the soul having a huge buff to the movement speed when you go into the ultimate is going to benefit them the fights for the drake are going to be real one one in terms of the dragons right now between the teams and it's spawning super quickly Yonatus okay. is on the board and can they do something on to matrix Jonas is though tanking it goes golden Ragnarok has been forced down. ZTY just kills him on the spot. Undying Rage would help him survive. Yes, it will. They brought down Matrix. That's a good pickup, but what they will work out of it. It's a good shutdown. It's good goal for ZTY. It's good pickup for them in general. And it's control of the bot lane that is right now in the hands of Fools. Yonatis has just recalled. He still has 25 seconds to get into the pit. And the moment he does so, probably Fools will be able to secure this trade. But look at what's happening on the top lane. Who left Sven's unattended? Who made the mistake? He got through two turrets. Both That's of them, they Addy got well. through those two turrets. And now they have to deal, de deal with that and with the fact that this Herald is going to go into the hands of AB. Yeah, the pickup was really good, but what will you work out of it? Well, okay, so you trade two turrets and a Herald now for that dragon. Sounds like a bad bad trade, but given the fact that this dragon is going to benefit you and it will benefit 
arguably even more your enemy team, it sounds like a good exchange. Now your main priority is not to die. Yashiro might be the first one to fall. Yonis is already charmed and stunned. That is Maddox from behind, and they just swipe two members of the enemy team off the map with Heartbreaker and Ari on the chase. Elliewood out together with Zeti White, so it seems like they're going to uh, only pay for that dragon with two lives. He's zero fighting wing with Svens. Will they turn him in? By the looks of it, no. For every single thing that Wolves are doing, AB are pricing twice as much. Mm-hmm. Exactly. When Wolves are happily with the dragon, boom, a wild Maddox appears. And what is that? AB are taking the kills. They're taking the turret on the mid lane as well. Wolves are taking one step forward, but Aliabank answer it with so many of their own steps. They're taking some leaps forward, to be honest, compared to the Wolves. And that is, again, taking us back to the question that we've been asking throughout the first two games. Where is the macro for the Wolves? Because in terms of the movement on the map, on the positioning on the map, on the ground decisions, Aliabank are so ahead of the Wolves. And some teams about meeting Wolves, for example, Motorani Forsaken, they were worried about meeting Wolves on the in the best of five. But it looks like everybody should be worried about AB now. Yonatis might be in trouble. Equalizer has been dropped down. Yonatis is already forced away. Addy will claim that kill and possess the body of the Rumble. Right now, things are just not looking bright and shiny whatsoever. Maybe they will try to... I thought they may be, they were going to try and answer it somehow, but what can they do? I am struggling to see what Wolves are able to do right now. They just need time, bounce. but... This... Bounce? Bounce on the mid lane, like you sure did. Ah, waiting for the week to come. Yeah. That's a way to do that's it. That's something, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that is something. <laughs> 2000 is the go difference in the bot lane almost 2000 is the difference in the jungle 1.3 is the difference in the top lane that lead progressively 6k what? it's not even 20th minute yet and it's 6k already between the yes. teams and now might be more units is caught away charm on Simani. he's for, he's really chunked away and he's killed as well and it turns into Rumble, gets away in the Heartbreaker. Yashiro tries to fire away from a flank, but he won't be able to do anything whatsoever. Yonitz is forced down for the third time in this game as Wolves will need to look for a way to answer it. The Baron has been started. Yonitz is nowhere to be seen for the next 15 seconds as the ultimate will chunk a few people. Minimagic is here, tries to have a set of the differences with Elliewood as the battle within the Baron pit has already started. Shutdown coming in onto Viego, that's a good pickup, but Hezier is already dead. ZTY slamming people with his sword for as long as he could in the Undying Rage, but they couldn't do anything whatsoever. It is an ace for Team AB and a Baron on top of it as well. Iron Wolves and correct barons these are the two lovers that were never meant to be and they're not going to be in this game again because that is such a nice baron for alia bank team that is so much damage from them i absolutely love the fact that everybody kind of forgot about Svens, including us but if you look at his positioning in this fight he is going to exit the pit and he is going to be dancing around dealing damage to the baron and to everybody on the enemy team and turns out it is quite a lot paired up with the fact that nobody obviously can kill uh all of nobody can kill mini magic for some reason everybody also ignores rail and look at that look at what happens Aliobank take it! Aliobank are going to take this game because they're just one victory away from progressing further and they really want to go and meet Motorani Forsaken. This series has not been treating kindly Iron Wolves. Iron Wolves need to step up for the last time. They do not have an opportunity to do anything whatsoever. They've been denied with these opportunities for the whole game. Now it's 9 thousand gold difference coming up to 10 and the base is already getting sieged by the baron buffed minions and alia bank team as they start to knock on the doors of the base on the bot lane looks like they can't really do it though because the wave clear is way too big mid lane is now getting sieged again rude coming in through to hijira ender as well 
Ellie Wood caught away just for a single second. ZTY tries to go on to Addy. Is Zero pushing through? Ragnarok to make sure that he can run away. Matix is in the safe zone. It looks like AB are looking for a reset. And perhaps they're looking to bring down the dragon as well. Yeah, because why not? They still have a minute of the Baron buff. They can recall, they can get their items, they can go back to the game, and also they can take the dragon in the meantime. And also recall if they feel like getting even more items into their pockets, in the pockets of Ali and Svens right now. The game is looking so in control for Ali Bank team. They can do whatever they want. Like, for example, trying to wait for somebody in their jungle. You sure am I being in trouble? Heartbreaker oh, over yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah. And that is a easy kill for Addy as he turns into him. I've been looking for more, but the recall was just on time to deliver. Wolves into safety. Now it's time to knock on the door of the mid lane. 15 more seconds. That means you can bring down the turret out with ease and maybe even pick up an inhibitor on top of that. And they will be able to do that with no problem. Turning their attention towards bot. Just a tiny bit more. One little nudge. And the structure will fall. Sven's firing on ZTY. Wolves are defending the base with their backs against the wall. But the wall is crumbling. The wall can be gone any second because they can hear the knock on their front door and they don't like the knock because they know that it's the monster it's crawling in the night who's doing it. Tries to go onto Sven's. Sven's hops over the wall onto the teleport. Ellie Ward tries to catch oh, yo, yo, with yo, the rest yo, yo, of the yo, yo, team, yo. but the CC immunity is there to help. Uh, Matic says that he turns around onto his Hero. His Hero claims at least one kill with the help of Yonatus. But look at the back lane. Mini Matic gets anyone, gets his Shiro. It's the double kill Minimum for AB. And then the long night. There will be no wolves howling in the night. The Night King came for House Stark with the clean 3 0 swipe. And I don't know what you're going to say about this game or about the series. Alia Bank were absolutely great, but Minimatic is going to be my personal hero because he jumps in everywhere. He controls the enemies, he controls the games, and he is going to go further with his team. This is our second contestant for the next week. This is who Motorale for a second will have to meet on the summoners. If they were kind of hoping for this outcome because we talked to them yesterday on the interview and their coach said, hey, I would rather meet Alia Bank team because we at least have an idea as to what to prepare for. But do they have an idea now? Because what they need to be prepared for is an excellent macro, great strategy on the summoners rift, and the will of total domination of whatever lies before them. Perhaps the thing that now puts Alia Bank in the most favorable position, even when it comes to the uh, to the match against the Madralia Forsaken, is the fact how well are they able to navigate themselves on the rift. It feels like this kind of macro decision is something that we've seen from zero tenacity from the pre uh, in the mm -hmm. previous split in this split they know exactly where to get those resources, where to get that additional additional experience not just gold but experience as well it is also a very important natural resource that you have and that we saw a very huge boost of morale in the second game where i was were able to hit some of the best team fights for them in order to just accelerate and get themselves in a very good advantages position but then that macro allowed alia bank team to say hold right there you criminal scum you're not gonna do anything and we're going to steal that win away from you. And then the third game, Wolves couldn't even do anything. Again, because of that macro decision. Not just the team, but also the individual. Because I still think that Addy's pathing, despite that little hiccup on the top lane, was pretty much insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love seeing things like that. And actually, Adi was the one to be the victim of this pathing from the enemies as well previously during the regular season. But right now, he went with one single target. He wanted to make the early game as hard as possible for the enemies. And while Wolves did have really strong laners on the top lane and on the mid lane, they would really love to have their jungler added to the equation for this additional damage, for the additional burst, for everything else that the jungler brings to effective laners. 
but he couldn't because he was really behind. He couldn't path through the jungle quickly enough and because of that he couldn't go to the lanes and help them out in the early because of that there was always an upper hand for Alia Bang team in the very early game. And then their bot lane, they didn't even need help or anything. They were pretty self-sustainable, got the kills on their own with a little bit of a... We don't call it help, we call it a steal here, okay? They were pretty confident that they could get to the pool of a can and after that things just started snowballing from Alia Bang team. And when you pick a snowballing composition, you want to see the snowball actually happening to you like an avalanche. I feel like wolves are falling victim to the very same thing that uh, a lot of teams have fell victim to in the previous uh, split and then this split as well. When it comes to XC, when it comes to uh, Team SK Gaming and uh, other teams in the previous seasons, or squads rather if you want. Which is, the idea is great, the execution is not that great. Because yeah. Wolf's ideas are brilliant. They have the fant good, very good drafts in order to have good team fight. They team fight really, really well. This is something that we praise them for, for these four seasons. But if you don't pay attention to other bits and other things on the map that you also need to take good care of, then teams that are well-rounded, more experienced, are going to be able to take that that game from you and if you think about it ab have one of the most experienced roster mm -hmm. right now in the entire league with only exception of matix these yeah. four are playing three splits at the very least together already i believe that mm -hmm. their cohesion and teamwork is already pretty much unrivaled and they proved it to us in this series because they showed to us that they can win when they are heavily ahead. They showed to us that they can also win when they are playing from behind and they can play really well from behind as we saw in the second game today. But Ariwan is going Logically. to be the MVP of today. And as much as I love how Mani, Minimachi sorry, was moving around the map today and doing so much, we have to praise Ari. And I have to agree that yes, he absolutely 100% deserves his MVP. There is no doubt, even in any bits of my head, that Addy should have been named an MVP of this game, fan oh, of this series rather. Fantastic performance just th through everything, through all these three games, and a fantastic performance from uh, AB. What? I mean, what whatsoever, really. But. How about we congratulate the winners themselves because we have the pleasure of having the man himself, the MVP Adi, on the interview with us today. Hello and congratulations with the first victory in the playoffs. And may I ask where exactly you're playing from today? Because it's a different background. <clears throat> uh, hi, yeah, yeah, we are playing from Bootcamp, from EPC. So, yeah, the, ah. the background is a bit different, but yeah, we feel really good. But the victories are the same. Uh, no, actually, they feel better as well because it's playoffs. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit better. I would say. Mate, walk me through this because um, we've been expecting, we've been, ex we've been talking behind the scenes, we've been talking uh, here on the broadcast as well, that we either expect this series to go 3-0 with the way, how were you showing yourself as a team throughout the, if they're at the split, or this is going to be a gruesome five map series. Now, can you please tell, tell me your perspective coming before that series and let's say inside of that series, how you were viewing how the things are going for? Mm, we expected that we we're either going to win 3-0 or 3-1 maybe because uh, we had some, like we were not sure about some things in the draft and we, we just let it open uh, for, the, for, like, for the games and we just uh, wanted, wanted, like first game we wanted to check what they are going to play. And so we thought maybe first game we might lose because of that, uh, because I don't know we we are like we are not sure about some things and maybe they will pick it and then they will they and and then they will win with them, but it didn't happen. We won the first game and we were like pretty confident that we will win all three games. Uh, still, like the second game was kind of hard because uh, we picked really like not proactive team combo, I would say. Uh, which made us not really be able to do a lot of stuff early on in the game. So. Uh, so we and we then we made some mistakes and we were, we had to play from behind. But uh, but yeah, overall we were pretty confident with how the game will go, uh, like the series overall, and that we we're gonna win. 
I love this confidence, but actually there's something I need to ask you about because yesterday we had an interview with Neutrali Forsaken, who of course won their series, and we asked them about how they think today would look like. And they said that they would like to meet Iron Wolves. No, sorry, they would like to meet you instead of Iron Wolves because they think that it's easier to play against you rather than Iron Wolves. What do you have to answer to that now that you're going to be facing them the next week? I mean, they, they won both games against us in the regular season, right? So they might be confident that they will beat us, but uh, we kind of we are kind of doing really good recently. So I'm I'm confident that we we can uh, we can uh, get the revenge in the playoffs. That sounds good. I'm pretty sure they already have been touching upon this subject, but now it's I think uh, ever more important because. You weren't just playing Ultra Liga Split, you've also have been participating in EPL, right? And yes. now coming into the playoffs with the fact that you don't have to <laughs> compete and prepare for the EPL as well, how comfortable you feel overall and how easy it is for you uh, for this whole thing? I mean, yeah, it's of course the schedule is a lot easier now without playing the EPL. Uh, like in June when we had to play both the like screams EPL and uh, official games in Ultra Liga, uh, the schedule was really tight and it was, yeah, it was tiring as well uh, to do this stuff. Unfortunately, we had to like also like um, how do you say it? I forgot the word. Like we had to drop off the tournament, you know, we couldn't finish it because we had an event, so we couldn't really finish playing the tournament. That was a bit sad. I, I, we thought we might uh, like finish top three because, like, at the end of the EPL, we were playing pretty fine. I think we could beat uh, most of the teams, but yeah, unfortunately, we we couldn't finish it. So, so yeah. But uh, in, in this month and overall, like recently, I think the schedule is like uh, a lot easier. I would say like you just have to play screams like solo queue and officials right and uh, you have more free time like we, we me and me and matching you know we, we like to grind the arenas which is pretty fun uh, like pretty fun <laughs> uh, new game mode like matching is I think he was like rank two or rank three and now he's like top five I am like top 30 Ooh. maybe and we are, we, are, we are grinding really hard so yeah uh, we enjoy our free time uh, instead of playing EPL <laughs> it's really great to hear. And uh, the last question I'm going to have for you, which is now we've seen probably one of the biggest statements coming from uh, uh, Alibang team. I mean, yes, of course, a lot of people have been expecting you to win, but I don't think that everybody or anybody have been expecting you to win in such uh, a gruesome fashion in a certain way of it because you've been just methodically choking your opponent out of the rift. But there's two more teams that we always ask people, how do you feel? fighting against them and now again this question is more important than ever you're gonna have if you manage to beat Madrani Forsaken in the next match then you will have to face Anonimo and Zero Tenacity now or Zero Tenacity how do you feel prepared for that mm, I mean obviously it's not gonna be an easy ride we we know that like our goal is obviously to reach EMEA Masters but we know it's gonna be hard and we need to work really hard uh, in screams and uh, yeah, in preparation etc so we are gonna give 100% for sure we know we can easily beat for a second we know they're shit but uh, they're just lucky uh, Capo. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, we can we can beat them, right? Uh, it's gonna be an easy ride. But then the day after, we need to play either zero dynasty on a run on the man. It's gonna be much harder. We will have just one day to prep, but it's fine. We are confident we can beat Anonimo with Zitan. It might be hard, but we are pretty sure they will win against Anonimo, and then against Anonimo we can win as well. Very well, then. Well, <laughs> that conducts the interview, I suppose. With that being said, Ali, thank you very much for joining us here today. Congratulations on the win, and congratulations on getting the MVP award for this series. The tradition goes, as always, if you have anyone that you would like to shout out to, maybe me, even in your native language, you have an opportunity to do so right now. Uh, I would like to shout out my mom that is watching the game, and uh, my friends that I play Aramson and Arena Swift, and that's gonna be it. Thank you very much, mate. Take a rest, and I hope to see you here night time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye bye. Thank you. Cheers, bye. Mate. All right, that's some confidence in there. That's some banter in there. We are living for it. But before we go any further, we again have to congratulate Alia Bang team for the amazing victory that they scored for themselves. And we have to wave our goodbyes to the Wolves. The charismatic team is already out of the playoffs, but they fought up until the very end. And we loved having them in the split.
this team, I believe, will never fail to bring so uh, so much strong emotions in both the viewers yeah. and the casters and the analysts behind the scenes. So to wave them goodbye, it's a hard thing. We're doing that with heavy hearts, but it is what it is nonetheless. Let's take a look at the predictions that we had for today. It was a 3-0 from Alia Bang Team. Yeah, because you no, haven't scored a single no, thing of them. No, no. <laughs> oh, I feel so sad. I am sad not just because it's not the Wolves for one, because I love both of these teams and I'm happy for whoever wins. I'm sad because it wasn't a series of five. I was really hoping for an excruciating series of five. I think Sylvan is cheating. <laughs> yeah. The mate is, is like 71 already. And I don't mean uh -huh. his age. I mean the amount of points that he has. <laughs> Although you might confuse it when you look at him. Love you, mate. <laughs> but, like, that is that is really, really, really hard to look at him. Anyway, <laughs> actually, production, wave happy at you. you. You got it this time around. Round two looks the following. First and second of August, we're going to have first zero tenacity versus on him orbit. Not anymore. Potentially one of the most biggest best of fives that we might have wished for yes. and then Madralni for second versus Aliobang team something tells me it's going to be another very big best of five for now though things have been rel relatively steady I mean yes I mean, yeah okay yesterday it was pretty cool today it was mm -hmm. very dominant yeah well and it's um uh, for Madralni for second and for Aliobang for both of them this is an interesting situation because in the previous Played, they got completely destroyed in the playoffs in the same manner but quite the opposite because it was 0-3 for both of them right now look at where Alia Bank are they are the ones scoring three in the 3-0 they are the ones stomping against the enemies and only I can't wait to see them clashing with Motorani Forsaken next week on 2nd of August because that is going to be a very big match a very big personal banter happening in there as well and we love that that is always making the games a little bit more spicy I also would like to bring your attention to the fact that right now we have four teams in which I actually do feel confidence in sending to EMEA Masters because we've uh -huh. got two teams that we have witnessed for two straight seasons to be the probably the best across across the split into at the very least in terms of the scoreboard itself right Albert Anonimo and Zero Tenacity and now we have two another teams maybe you can say an unlikely heroes at least one of them because if i recall correctly busy uh, have put uh Madralian forsaken in his expectations on spot number 10. yeah that didn't that. age well mate <laughs> however despite the fact that you can call Madralian forsaken a bit of an unlikely hero i still feel like i would be very confident sending any of those four teams to the EMEA to represent our region just because what level of either macro or draft or whatever the hell is going on the map I don't know but it works out rather well is for all of these four teams it just works splendidly really but it's not for you to choose. It is up for the teams actually to choose which of them are going to progress into the EMEA Masters because next week we are going to have some decisions already made between the teams and then we're going to go into the small and the grand finals. And I have already put all my predictions for the upcoming games. I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. I don't know who's going to be playing who, but I already put my predictions to be five games every single time. And I'm not changing it. I'm looking for a banger. I'm looking for my silver scrapes. Well, you're not getting any, at least not yet. We'll see if you're going to get any next time. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. It was Dr. Brewman, it was Solari. We witnessed Aliabang team versus Owen Wolves, and Aliabang team will advance into the next round of playoffs. We'll see you next time, here. Here. <laughs> Bye.
Now we're becoming the parliament. We came and we saw and we conquered it. Now we welcome you to our concurrent. Position. Stay true to your lane and join Kia at the League of Legends Emir Championship. Kia, movement that inspires.